Lord God, thank you for another opportunity to run the Cheez-It 355 here at the Glen. We thank you for the wonderful weather. We ask, Lord, that you would grant us a safe race. Keep each driver, course worker, and crew member safe from harm, and help us to remember that all good things come from you. Amen. His much-anticipated album, Digital Vein, will be released on September 18th, and his new single, Criminals, is out now. Here to honor America, please welcome platinum-selling singer-songwriter and American Idol Season 7 winner David Cook as he performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Incredible rendition of the national anthem. And speaking of incredible, two drivers we've got to focus on. Jeff Gordon, he's won four times at this racetrack, has to be one of the favorites today as well. Yeah, no question. He's been so good on the road courses throughout his entire career. This may be his last road course win. I think he's good enough to win today, and I know he really wants it because this could be the last one. I absolutely think he's good enough to win today, Jeff, even though his last win didn't come since 2006. Last year, he's running in the top two most of the day before he had mechanical trouble and has been fast all weekend. And the driver with the most wins all time at Watkins Glen is Tony Stewart. He has five, but he missed the last two races here in 2013 due to a broken leg. And last year, of course, this race was held the morning after the Kevin Ward Jr. incident. Stewart was never criminally charged, but on Friday, Kevin Ward Jr.'s family filed a wrongful death civil lawsuit against him. Stewart's team said he didn't want to have any comment on the suit at this time. Guys. Tony starts third today, his best start of the season. Could we be seeing a turnaround with Tony? No question. You go back the last couple weeks, Tony Stewart's qualified well. He's had good speed. They haven't finished well, but they had cars good enough to finish well. So whenever a turnaround starts, it first starts with speed, and there's no question they've had that the last several weeks. Yeah, what's been different, Tony Stewart has had the speed his teammates have had. Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch have had fast cars. Last three weeks, Tony Stewart has had a fast car. He's also, with Jeff Gordon, these two have to be favorites today at the Glen. Drivers are strapping in. Coming up next, the command of fire engines from the Glen.
track is a very unique course on how fast it is. The difficulties of Watkins Glen are numerous. There's a lot of places you can lose or gain at the Glen. Winning at Watkins Glen, biggest win of my career. Allmendinger is pulling away. He'll score his first career win. There was so much emotion, pure joy. It's a moment I'll never forget. It's the Glen. Some call it a wild card race to get into the chase for the Sprint Cup Championship. Watkins Glen International. Seven turns. We've already seen that there are trouble spots around this track that the drivers will have to deal with. Before they get on track, we got to fire the engines. Let's go trackside for the command. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome our Grand Marshals. Vice President of Grocery for Kroger Company, Mel Bombrisi, and Coordinator of Grocery Edibles for the Kroger Company, Brent Cox. Drivers, start your engines! Forty three cars have fired up. The drivers are ready to go. Who will be successful at the Glen? We're about to find out. Green flags next. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Sprint. Check out the new all-in plan at Sprint.com slash all-in. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Racing from Watkins Glen International. Let's take a look at our starting grid. A.J. Allmendinger, he swept both poles on road courses this year and the defending race winner from here at the Glen. 
Row two made up of Stuart Haas racing teammates Tony Stewart, Kevin Harvick. Tony Stewart with the most wins all time here at the Glen. In row three, we have Jeff Gordon with nine road course wins. That's the most of all time. And Kyle Larson, only his fourth road course race. Back in row four, Kyle Busch won at Sonoma in June. He swept both road course races in 08, trying to do it again this year. Starting ninth today, Jimmy Johnson hasn't won at the Glen. Only one of four tracks. See row six, Brad Keselowski and Justin Algar with his career best start. And back in row seven, Denny Hamlin. He's also winless on road courses. Row eight's made up of Carl Edwards and yesterday's Xfinity winner, Joey Logano. Row nine, Jamie McMurray and Clint Boyer, two drivers need good runs to help their chase efforts. Another driver needing a good run for the chase, Ryan Newman back in row 10. He was the 2002 Watkins Glen runner up. Starting in row 11, Eric Amaroller and with her best start ever at the Glen, Danica Patrick. Starting in 23rd is Casey Kane and after a bad race last week, working to get himself back into the chase grid. Back in 26 will be Matt Kenza. He's never finished in the top five on a road course. I'm trying to change that statistic today. Outside row 14, Paul Menard, who started his cup racing career back in 2003 at Watkins Glen. Row 15, we have Casey Mears and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Back in 16, it's Chris Busher, the Xfinity Series points leader. He finished third in that race yesterday. Some relatively inexperienced guys here at Watkins Glen. Cole Witt with only his second start here while Trevor Bain is making his first. In row 18, we have Alex Kennedy, career best finish on the road course at Sonoma in June and Landon Castle. Back in 19, it's road course specialist, Boris said. His best Watkins Glen finish was third back in 2005. Row 20th is made up with Alex Bowman and Mike Lynette, both making their second ever start here at the Glen. In row 21, Jeb Burton with his first Watkins Glen start and J.J. Yaley. And at the back of the pack, starting 43rd, will be Timmy Hill, making his first Watkins Glen start. Let's see if we can talk to the poll winner, Jeff Burton. AJ is Jeff Burton in the NBCSN booth. You got us, bud? AJ, you with us? You guys got me. Yes, sir, we got you. So look, you sat on poles, you won races on road courses. Everybody in the booth wanted to know, why are you so good here? Oh, I mean, just, uh, I've always enjoyed this place. I feel like it's a place I can be I can be aggressive and you can really attack the racetrack. A place like Sonoma, it's taking a little more time to learn how to get around that place. It's finesse. Uh, this place you can really get after it and and, uh, and just really have a lot of fun on this racetrack. It's kind of kind of driving like a like I could drive a champ car. So I've always enjoyed it for that reason. Uh, but my team gives me a, a great car. The last two years here, uh, sit on the pole is pretty awesome. I think this uh, Kroger Bush Speed Chevy. We do all the right things, get a little luck, have the yellows fall at the right time. We should have a shot again. Okay, so you did pull the win off last year. It moved into the chase. High, high expectations for today. You feel like you can get it done again? I think we'll have a car capable of it. I mean, this place, as you know, Jeff, it's, uh, it's all about the yellows falling at the right time and pitch strategy and uh, a little bit of luck that plays into it. You know, last year everything fell the right way for us, but we do the right things. Make no mistakes, my picker's been awesome the last few months, so uh, we'll have a shot at it. That's all we can ask for. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. All right, we'll go give you your best shot and have fun. Thank you, guys. One of the more adventurous rides at Watkins Glen, and we get to ride along with a few different drivers, including Joey Logano in the 22. He starts 16th today with the Coca-Cola in-car camera. The Toyota on board of Carl Edwards starts 15th today. And Brad Keselowski has the Ford EcoBoost onboard camera. He'll start 11. Kyle Busch has the Sprint in-car camera. He starts 8th today. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the Nationwide onboard. He'll start 7th. Kevin Harvick will carry the Budweiser onboard. He'll start 4th on the field. In row number 2, it's Tony Stewart. He starts 3rd. And A.J. Allmendinger on the front row with the Scott Products onboard camera will start on the pole. They're going to take one more time around this seven-turn road course. While they're doing that, we'll slip away quick and we'll be right back for the green flag.
Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Give us some great pictures from high above this road course. For more on the stories that are going to be taking place during the race, let's go to the pit road and Marty Snyder. Well, Rick, before the race and countdown to green, we heard A.J. Allmendinger say everybody puts pressure on them, but nobody puts more pressure on himself than A.J. Allmendinger. He said, I know going into this weekend that we must be good here. And one of the keys today is staying calm. So before the race, Brian Burns, his crew chief, sat A.J. Allmendinger down. He said, listen, at parts of the day today, we're going to be back in the 20s. I need you to stick with me. Stay in the game mentally. Do not leave me because remember last year, they used a three-stop strategy. A.J. got frustrated by that, but at the end of the day, they were the car out front. They may use that same strategy today to put them out, set themselves out front to win back-to-back -back races at Watkins Glen. Dave Burns. Marty, five races until the chase starts, and the championship reigning four team is solidly in with two wins. So I asked Rodney Childers, the, the crew chief, about today. He said, hey, it's about keeping the team motivated and confident heading into the chase. Every race counts, and we will try to win today. They've had speed all weekend, and if you ask around the garage area, a lot of people are keeping their eyes on the four car. Mike Massaro? Dave, you know a week ago Kyle Busch's winning streak may have come to an end, but don't be fooled. His performance and his expectations are still sky high. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago after his Indianapolis win, he told me the only time in his career that he's been more confident than he is now was back in 2008, a season when he won eight races. Something else he did that year? He swept both road course events. That's exactly what he's trying to do today. Today he's trying to duplicate the performance he had at Sonoma earlier in the year and prove that he is the undisputed king of the road for 2015. Kelly? Mike, not one of Jimmy Johnson's 74 career wins has come here at Watkins Glen. And when I talked to him just a few minutes ago, he said it would be really special to check this box. He's got just four tracks left where he has not won a race. The six-time champion is a good road course racer. He has finished inside the top 10 in eight of the last nine road course races, and now he will start inside the top 10 today. Jimmy Johnson rolling off ninth. We'll see if he will change that statistic here at Watkins Glen. Watch a live stream of every Sprint Cup Series race with NBC Sports Live Extra. It's available on your laptops or tablets, smartphones, and connected TVs. NBC Sports Live Extra it brings you closer to every race. I'm going to take a closer look at the track facts for Watkins Glen International. 2.45 miles, seven turns, how we count them. The longest straightaway is just over 2,000 feet. There is an elevation here, elevation drop of just over 120 feet. Also want to take a look at today's Sunoco fuel strategy. 90 laps, 220 0.5 miles pit road speed is 40 miles per hour and the fuel window falls between 30 and 32 laps Steve. Yeah I mean that is a, a rough window at best I would say 30 or 32 laps of what those teams expect they can run running hard under green using as much fuel as they can but we all talk about strategy here at Watkins Glen these guys are going to be shifting early lifting early doing everything they can do to stretch that fuel window if that's the strategy they think they have to play to get to the end. One of the other things that these teams will have to deal with is the different positions for spotters Dave and Rick every race before every race they have a check of the radio just to make sure it's working but today the radio chatter is going crazy because they've got spotters in about three different positions here plus the crew chief who wants to be in and oh by the way the driver who needs to find out what's going on as well so a lot of chatter on the radio right now just making sure everything works and everybody is in touch with each other I think we had Jeff Burton in a few of those spots on Friday <laughs> this racetrack is so big you can't do it with one spotter you have to spread them around the racetrack so that you can see all the important corners. A lot of high impact wrecks we've seen here, multi-car wrecks. It's important to have your spotter to help work your way through that. Quite a few guys that will be concerned at the end of this race if they will still be in contention for a chase spot because Kyle Busch could push his way into the chase grid if he's able to break into the top 30 in points. What if A.J. Allmendinger wins? Boom, he's right into the chase. That takes two spots away for the guys who are racing to get in on points. That's going to be a storyline that we will follow all day. Martin Truex Jr. on the outside of A.J. Allmendinger won the pole on Friday. Green flag in the air. We're road course racing at the Glen.
many. They're three wide through turn one. And now up through the S's. The long back straightaway heading right into the bus stop or inner loop. This is where it gets narrow. It's one thing to go up the S's and try and do that too wide, but too wide through the bus stop doesn't really work. Everyone gets single file down into turn five, the carousel. That was a clean start. Everybody tried to make them race for each other. Got single file in the inner loop. No more than two wide. Getting into the S's. Got single file quickly. As this race goes on, they're not going to be that friendly. Fairly level run into turn six. The left-hander. Now they're too wide. Kyle Bush already spoken a little bit as he came through the grass. That pushed Jeff Gordon all the way out. Kyle made a really late seven. move, really late aggressive move. Didn't really give Kyle Larson much of a chance to know that he was going to make that move. When you break that late, you kind of surprise the guy. The guy's looking in his mirror, checking you, but when you make a move that late, he doesn't expect you to be there. So that's a lot of, we see a lot of incidents that way. Kyle had to lock the brakes up. I think they may have gotten together a little bit, but not much. So, so everyone understands, because I'm not a driver as well. When you go down these straightaways, halfway down the straightaway, you check your mirror, but there's a point where you have to start focus out ahead, look at your brake marks, and if that driver behind you dives out that late, your focus is already on the corner ahead. That's exactly right, and that's a place, you know, we, we have spotters over there. We talked about it at the start of the race. There's Kyle looking again on Kyle Larson, trying to get double wide, in, double wide into the inner loop. They did make it work. That's a dangerous place also to make a move. But you're looking, you're always looking in your mirror. But there comes a point, as you said, Steve, you've got to focus on the corner in front of you. You've got to find your braking zone. You've got to start to lift. You've got to start to brake, get it downshifted. There comes a point when somebody makes a move so late, you can't know they're going to make that move. So the driver that's trying to make that move, he has to understand that. He can't make that move and put you in that position. Martin Schroix Jr. right on the back bumper, the 47 of A.J. Allmendinger. Back onto the front stretch they come. And two laps are in the books. A.J. Allmendinger hanging on for those two laps. Martin Truex Jr. right behind him. We see the move by Kevin Harvick getting by Tony Stewart. Harvick in the four, Tony Stewart in the 14. For the second week in a row, when we walked through the garage, all we heard was four car, four car, four car. Everybody in the garage has talked about the speed of Kevin Harvick in that four car. So no surprise to see him making a move, moving to the front. The inner loop they go. We saw earlier that move that was made. Look at Kyle. See how late that move is. They're already under braking. So when Kyle Larson goes a turn, he can't expect that Kyle Busch is there. You can't blame Kyle Busch for making the move, trying to get by him. But at the same time, here we go right here. They're braking. He tries to outbreak him. Kyle Larson never knew he was there. He just didn't expect him to be there. He looks again. Getting into getting seven. Into, into seven, thank you. It's too many corners. <laughs> getting into seven, but he thought better of it and lifted, and that's a wise move. Passing zone in turn seven is there, but it's not advised. You see a lot of wrecks there. And Kyle Busch has been able to get by Kyle Larson. Now he's right behind the 14 of Tony Stewart. Stewart, another great qualifying run this week. Another thing we'll talk about at Watkins Glen is even though it seems short at only 90 laps, 90 laps around Watkins Glen is very hard on equipment. This is rough on brakes, rough on suspension as you go over these curbs. So drivers will have to pace themselves. This is more of a marathon than a sprint. While they are giving it their all, there's also an educated way to do that. So if you want to try to overtake the car in front of you, much like we watched Kyle Busch here, he might not pull out and try to pass Tony Stewart, but he's going to put pressure on Tony Stewart. And there's going to be a point in time where Tony has to decide, does he want to continue up this pace, or is he just going to let Kyle Busch go? The problem Tony Stewart has is it's just not Kyle Busch. If he lets the 18 go, soon to follow will be the 42 of Kyle Larson, the 24 of Jeff Gordon, even the 88 of Dale Jr. are back there waiting for an opening. And also the problem is when a guy behind you is just a little bit quicker than you, the only way to keep them behind you on a road course is to drive in the corner a little bit deeper. Try to go into the throttle a little little sooner when you do those things here's a move Kyle Busch is making a move I talked about that's risky Kyle Busch trying to get by the 14 of Tony Stewart while he's doing that he's trying to improve another position he is in the top 30 in points and as you'll see across the top of the screen if there is a green bar underneath the driver that means they've won already this year and they will be in the chase if there's a yellow bar underneath the driver they're in the top 16 in points for example Paul Menard 
actually A.J. Allmendinger is in the top 16 right now in points and so he will have a yellow chip below his name. He's leading this race so the potential for him to win this race to get into the chase will have a yellow bar beneath the leader of this race. And Jimmy Johnson he missed the interlude now he's got to come to a complete stop and then he can go again if he does not come to a complete stop there's a penalty he would have to pass through pit road so he missed the interlude which is a smart thing to do it's better than wrecking but you have to come to a complete stop by rule. Yeah it was running seventh before he missed the interlude now he blends with Danica Patrick who the last lap around was running 22nd so that's going to cost him 15 positions or so. Take another look at what just happened with the 48 and Jimmy Johnson. Long straightaway, looking on the inside of Junior. He sees Junior doesn't know he's, he's coming down. So the best thing to do is just to get himself out of that situation. He had a clear path to the zone. Stop, completely stop, get going, no penalty. That was the smartest move he could have made. If he would have tried to just keep on going, there would have been a penalty. If he would have ignored what Junior was doing, there would have been a wreck. Now he cycled back to 22nd in the running order after that mistake. So what we've seen already, we've seen it with Jimmy Johnson. We've seen it with Kyle Busch. Breaking zones are important. The best way to pass a guy on a road course is just to outbreak them getting into the corner. If you can be right to them and try to outbreak them getting in the corner, that's the best way to do it. We've seen Kyle Busch obviously has a tremendous amount of confidence in the brakes on his race car. If you have good brakes at Watkins Glen or Sonoma, it's a huge advantage. The question is, can you overwork them? Can you overheat them? Can you do damage on to them early in the race that makes it so you can't use them the way you want to later in the race? That's always a balance the driver has to make. And the strategy that the crew chiefs have to play, how early can you come to pit road to get into your window? A.J. Allmendinger out front here. Cheese at 355 at the Glen. NASCAR Mobile is the best way to follow your favorite drivers. You can build your own leaderboards, watch live in car cameras, and listen to driver in car audio. Go to NASCAR.com forward slash mobile. AJ Allmendinger out in front has not put any distance between himself and second place Martin Truex Jr. Kevin Harvick is chasing in third. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson. 
Yeah, they are the top five. We've, we've talked about overtaking the passing and how you accomplish it. There's a lot of different ways you could do it around here at Watkins Glen, but one way is you hope that the guy in front of you makes a mistake. So we're on board here with Joey Logano getting into turn one, and you see the three, the rear tires lock up, smoke look like perhaps wheel hop Jeff Burton, and Austin Dillon, a great job to save the car, first of all, didn't spin. But then you saw Joey Logano pounced on Clear. the opportunity, and Denny Hamlin, he's right there too. When someone gets out of the preferred line, you're, everyone is on you. This, this Sprint Cup Series race, it's like sharks in the water. If they smell blood, if they think you're offline, I don't care if it's lap nine, they're going to attack you. Yeah, and on lap nine, lap six, when you're already loose getting in the corner under braking, guess what? It's only Jeez. going to get worse. So yeah. We've seen Austin Dillon. He's dropped all the way back to 19th. If you can't carry that speed into the corner, you're going backwards. You have to be able to break getting in. And why are we starting to see this now? As you see, a pretty aggressive move by Kurt Busch. Looks to the inside of Allgaier. And this is going to be interesting to see if the 51 gives him the spot into the first S. He doesn't. He closes the door, takes position. But one thing we have to remember, they've run 10 laps. To run 10 laps in practice at Watkins Glen takes 12, 13 minutes, not to count the time in and out. So you're looking at a 15-minute run. Oh, we've well, got problems Oh, with we've had an issue. Eric Almarola like and Paul Menard in the 27. Yeah, that's down into turn one. We're going to see this a lot today. Turn one is a heavy braking zone. There's damage on the right side of the 43. You see them smoking. Paul Menard and and uh, um, and, uh AJ, or, AJ, Al or, <laughs> Eric Almarola, <laughs> sorry. We have, a, we have a problem. Right. These are both drivers that are doing their best to get into the chase. So problems early in a race is not what either one of these drivers needed. Take a look at what just happened. Greg Biffle on the inside of the 43. The 43 just gets loose on the outside of the 16. He's already turning back to the left, trying to keep his car. You see the 27. He's committed to that lane. He gets on the brakes hard, but at that speed, there's just nothing Paul Menard can do. He gets into the right front of the 43. A little bit of damage, has some tire smoke. You see here the 16 gets underneath the 43 and the 43. Jeff, you've mentioned this before all weekend long. The 43 looked like he was in control, but as the rear tires went up over that painted curb, it definitely got loose and he lost control. And at every other racetrack we go to, that'd be a caution. You know, if you had two cars spinning, it would right. be a caution. But here you spin, you move out of the way, NASCAR continues to let you to race. You had mentioned that those drivers on the bubble trying to get into the chase. Menard and Almarola both outside the top 16 right now. As these number of races dwindle down and we get to the point where we're down to two races, four races, five races, every race means so much. You just can't afford mistakes. Kelly. And Eric Almirola has been really confident that they could still point their way into the chase. This is not what they needed. They think the toe has been knocked out. You see saw a lot of tire rub there on the right front as well after that contact. So they're just going to try to fix that damage here to the 43. They'll give them four fresh Goodyear tires and uh, hopefully get them back out. They really need to salvage a good point. Say Eric Almirola have been working hard on a simulator to improve his road course driving. Uh, and just not what this team needs as they look to get back to the chase for the second year in a row. Coming in, Almirola was 17th in the points, but as he's running, he's dropped down few spots already. And you'll see as the leaders are already on the back stretch here out of the S's, Eric Almarle has lost a lap on pit road, but you know, the crew's doing the best they can. They have to get the tires, the tire clearance. You can't send them back on the racetrack. And what we see with this chase format is teams start eliminating themselves. You know, you end up with having five or six teams with a chance, and you have four or five with a chance. As teams have troubles, they just eliminate themselves, and that's why these last five races are so important trying to make the chase. Trying to continue to put perfect laps back to back. A.J. Allmendinger has been flawless to start this race.
Sunday Night Football returns tonight. Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers face Teddy Bridgewater and the Vikings in the Hall of Fame game at 8 p.m. Eastern. It all leads up to NFL kickoff September 10th only on NBC. A.J. Almendinger is still in front of the field at Watkins Glen. They've completed 14 of the 90 scheduled laps. Mark Trudge Jr., Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, the top five. Mark Trudge is doing a great job of not letting A.J. Almendinger just set into a rhythm. Every straightaway, he looks back in his mirror. He sees the hood of that 78 car. Dave. Rick, talking about the 78 of Martin Truex Jr., one of the good things for them going forward is the fact that they have speed every weekend. And I was talking to the crew today earlier, and they were saying how disappointed they were in last week's result. You see Martin again pressuring the 47 of Malmendinger down this straightaway. After last week's out of gas and Martin slid through the pits, they were kind of grumpy. And another team came up to him and said, hey, dude, you've got speed. We can't even see the front of the field. And that changed his whole perspective. They know that they've got good stuff here going into the chase. And they think they might be able to win today as well. Gives a look to the inside of A.J. Allmendinger. Again, that pressure continues to be put on race leader A.J. Allmendinger. Right behind Martin Truex Jr., the four of Kevin Harvick. He's been able to close the gap now. So the top three are running nose to tail. Yeah, and another, through the S's. another distraction for A.J. Allmendinger is the 23 of J.J. Yaley. As they approach J.J. Yaley, we talk about how narrow this track is in places. He's going to have to find a way around that slower car without giving up time to Martin Truex. You see how much they close on the 23 into the bus stop. It'll be interesting exiting here into the carousel. Tony Stewart started third today. He's dropped back to ninth. Interesting perspective from Tony Stewart's vantage point. We look over his shoulder on the right side of the screen. He's using the long right-hander. A lot of people call it the carousel. He's got the right side right on the curb. He's going to jump the curb. Now he's got a long straightaway going into turn six. Uh, going to downshift into, sec into second. Downshifts late. Left side's on the curb. Accelerate hard. Stays in the second all the way there. This this is the last corner heading to the start finish line. Marty, you got something on Tony? Well, when I talked to him before the race, Jeff, he said, honestly, Friday in race trim, I wasn't very happy with the car. But yesterday when we went to qualifying trim, I was really happy with it. Obviously, they qualified third. So Tony felt pretty good. But he said, I honestly don't know what I'm going to have going into the race today. Well, they started the race. He's now fallen back these six spots. And for a long time, Tony didn't say anything on the radio. You can see why. He's so busy inside the race car. But a moment ago, he said, through the S's, I'm lacking front grip. Also through turns five and ten, I'm lacking front grip. Steve, those are critical parts of the racetrack. So when your car's tight through there, not going to work too well, is it? No, it's not, Marty. But I would tell Tony Stewart to be patient. Only 17 laps into a run. I'd want to know how the car started at lap 17. Have we lacked front grip all 17 laps? Did it start good? Did it get tighter? So feedback is very important, but you have to understand the feedback over the course of the run because these cars change dramatically over a fuel run. And also, we talked about Tony Stewart and his team. They, they're trying to dig out of a hole. They're trying to get better. And we talk about this every week with teams that are struggling. You're probably not going to go from running 20th to leading the race. So for these guys, they have to have realistic expectations. I believe running top 10, I think that's a win. I think moving forward, it gives them some confidence. It gives them something positive to build on. So let's don't look at this. If I'm Tony Stewart and his team, let's don't look at this as, oh, my gosh, we're ninth. It's terrible. Let's look at this the other way. Hey, we've improved. We're running ninth. Let's try to get a top five out of it. And just two spots back from Tony Stewart. Joey Logano, who won the Xfinity race yesterday here at the Glen, he has also an interesting camera perspective. Yeah, I mean, Joey Logano proved yesterday he knows how to get around Watkins Glen in that Xfinity car. Not only did he win the race, but recovering from a pit penalty, he passed a tremendous amount of cars, drove back up through the field under green. It was really an impressive performance. And this is another great camera shot. So we see Joey Logano going through the bus stop on the right side of your screen. On the left side, we're looking down at his feet, Jeff. Explain to us, every time we see him tap the throttle, do a lot of footwork here at Watkins Glen. That's right. So he's in this long right-hander. He's already in gear. He's in second gear. So he's just trying to get the throttle down when the rear tires and the front tires will allow him. He just went to third gear. You saw his right foot come off. He's going to go to fourth gear right there. Now watch his foot. Boom. Boom. Every time he does that, it's in neutral when he's doing that. And what he's doing is running the RPMs of the engine up, and then he's downshifting. If you don't do that, 
you will break the rear end, you will break the transmission, you will wheel hop it. The rear tires will really be hopping up and down on the racetrack. So you have to match the RPMs up with the gear that you're going into. Right here, boom, right there. That's him downshifting, getting the RPMs up so he can get it in gear. Marty. Rick talked to Todd Gordon this morning. He said they took some of those setup principles from the Xfinity Series win yesterday and applied it to the Cup Series car today. Joey Logano moving forward so far today. He said the car is tight in the carousel, but very good in the bus stop, the section he's getting ready to come up to right now. And the one thing he's done inside the car is he's used that adjustable track bar because it's tight. He's already gone up 2.5 in that adjustable track bar. Jeff, you never had one of those here when you were running a road course, but I bet as a driver you wish you had one because you could play with that thing all over this track. Right, couldn't you? Right, if you saw me driving a road course, I needed as few tools as possible. I needed to keep it simple, man. Keep it simple. Keep Joe his Legato hands on the wheel. Way off the track after he came out of turn number five. Cars are flying at the Glen. Stay with us. It happened on lap 21. Martin Truex Jr. took the lead away from A.J. Allmendinger and Kevin Harvick followed right behind. Allmendinger has fallen back to third now. Here's how he lost the lead. Truex put a lot of pressure on him into six. That was able to stay close to him. Made the aggressive move into seven. And again, that's a very aggressive move. It's hard for uh, Allmendinger to see that he's there. Then he gave that to you. Here we go right here. You see he's got momentum. Just stays to the right. Allmendinger gave him plenty of room, made it easy. And it's almost like A.J. Allmendinger, though, as he gets more experience in these Sprint Cup cars, you know, he's won a race now, he has some more confidence. You see here, he's going to continue to lose second spot to the four of Kevin Harvick down into turn one. He knew when he got through turn six, he didn't get through there great. And he almost felt the run of the 78 because he gave him a ton of room, Jeff, knowing that this is early in the race. Let's not tear up our stuff. We have only completed 21 laps there, Marty. And during that run, Steve, A.J. Allmendinger, after he got in pass, said, I just destroyed my rear tires. He kind of looked like he was pacing himself, but he may have been running harder than we thought to keep the 78 behind him. And then he told Brian Burns, he said, listen, we're not going to win the race like this. We need to do something big to put ourselves back in contention to win it. A.J. Allmendinger has given up the lead. Now he's in third. So you have right. to wonder, with a team that has so much pressure on them, 
they need to win this race. Their year is, this is their year. Being able to win this race is their year. If something's going wrong early in the race, how are they going to handle it? Are they going to panic? Are they going to just use, you know, a methodical approach and try to get it back? There's so much pressure on this team, you have to wonder how it's going to affect them. And now that he's not in front, does he change his strategy? That might come into play. The driver right behind him, Kyle Busch, closing in on the pole winner, Mike. And feeling pretty good about his race car right now, too, Rick. He's uh, saying he's got a little bit of a, a loose condition in the carousel and maybe has some limited brake, but feels like the race car is real strong right now. But as we talk about pressure, you would think maybe Kyle Busch might be feeling a little bit of it being outside the top 30, but not the case. I spoke with his crew chief, Adam Stevens, this morning. And he said, we're not really feeling that now. We're going to go after wins as long as we can. He said, maybe we'll start cutting back on the risk taking as we get closer to Richmond. So expect them to hang it all out this afternoon, looking for yet another victory in that 18 car. And once again, you can see on the top of the screen as the running order continues to run across there, drivers that are in the top 16 in points, but without a win, will have a yellow chiclet below their name. The drivers that have a win are in the top 30. They will have a green chiclet below their name with Chase. And we see Jeff Gordon on pit road now. Some of the strategy taking place early, Marty. Rick, the first of the cars to come down pit road. And remember, A.J. Allmendinger pit on lap 20 last year, was able to win this race. There are bigger problems, though, for Jeff Gordon. It's going to be a four-tire change. And he said initially in the run, he had some brake fade. But at the end of the run, he said once the brakes heated up, they went all the way to the floor. So certainly some concern here. They have pulled a little bit of tape off the grill to help out the brakes. And four rounds of wedge to help Jeff Gordon as well. Pit road speed 40 miles an hour and it's downhill when you're exiting pit road. That's not something you want to be dealing with this early in the race. You know we had a 24 lap run so that's a that is a relatively long run but you have to have good brakes. We talked about it several times already as the run goes on they get hotter and hotter and hotter. All that heat transfers into the brake fluid. It's like Greg Biffle having a problem. Yep through the grass for Greg Biffle he'll have to come to pit road. He's got a lot of damage to the left side of that car left front tire down. He's got a flat. And a flat tire. Bring it, bring it, if I'm a crew it, chief on pit road, you hear it. They're telling him to bring it. But I'm thinking about this debris I see. If I'm another crew chief, I'm calling my car to pit road right now. We see Paul Wolf has called Brad Kozlowski on pit road. This could be a yellow. This could be what everybody's looking for, Marty. And as soon as he saw that debris, they told him to come to pit road. He was a very advantageous spot, in a very advantageous spot on the racetrack to be able to do that. It's going to be four tires for Brad Kozlowski. He said his car started a little bit too tight, but it freed up as the run went along. You're going to see a wedge adjustment as well. Mike. And Carl Edwards coming down. He's feeling pretty good about his race car for the time being. The call very conservative. No adjustments. Just a four tire change. Has a little trouble getting out of his box, but finally does. Yeah, that 19, he slid too close to pit wall. It looked like not only was he slow leaving his box, but the jack man had to do a lot of work to get the right side up. Marty? Austin Dillon having some struggles. We saw that under braking already leaving pit road with a wedge adjustment. The car was way too loose for Austin Dillon. He also used the track bar inside the car. Cautions out for debris. A lot of drivers had been calling for that smart move by these guys who already pitted. Dave? And Greg Biffle is leaving pit road. Actually, not yet. The wounded 16 is now gone. The left front tire down on his race car had been reporting his car was a little bit tight in the right hand turns. That wasn't the biggest issue. They had a left front tire go down and that was what we saw leaving some debris on the track. Take a look. I see left fronts down. Getting into the corner at that point, he's along for the ride. There's nothing he can do. So uh, this caution has a, is going to have a huge bearing on the strategy of this race. Uh, as cars being able to get on pit road under caution, that's what you want. Now you're going to be able to go back out. Everybody behind you is going to have to pit. You're going to come out in front of all of them. So it's a good break for a lot of teams. A lot of guys took advantage of this caution.
Welcome back to Watkins Glen under our first caution of the day. Some debris on the racetrack from the 16 of Greg Biffle. Some drivers taking advantage of that debris, knowing that a caution was going to come out, ducking onto pit road when they had the opportunity to do it. Others not taking advantage of that. And now we see a lot of the lead lap cars making the left turn and, or excuse me, right turn onto pit road. They come onto pit road backwards here at Watkins Glen. Dave? First place, Martin Truex Jr. in the first laps he's led at Watkins Glen. He'll get Sunoco fuel, Goodyear tires, and just a slight air pressure adjustment. Very happy with the car. Kevin Harvick, his car was a little bit free off the corners. They'll get four tires as well in Sunoco fuel. Marty? Bottom of your screen, A.J. Allmendinger hitting a stall right now. He said the car was loose from the beginning of that run, and it got worse as they went along. He felt like he just burnt the rear tires off of the car. It's going to be four new Goodyear tires. Also, two rounds down on the track bar for A.J. Allmendinger. Four tires for him. And good. Sunoco Fuel. Martin Truex Jr. actually wins the race off the pit road for the guys who stopped right here. And that race off pit road is brought to you by GEICO. Martin Trucks Jr. first off of pit road, four tire stop for the top 10. Some positions gained and lost on pit road early. I want to take a look at the fastest pit road time, which was turned in by Martin Truex Jr. from the time he got onto pit road until the time he got off of pit road. 37.1 seconds presented by Sprint. Join all in wireless from Sprint. Get unlimited talk, text, and high speed data. Pick your smartphone for just $80 a month. 
so, Rick, when we talk about opportunity and taking advantage of information on the racetrack, we saw the 16 have a flat tire and go through the bus stop, and we heard talk about debris. But the leaders had already exited the last corner. We're going down the front stretch. So the next time around, they're being called to pit road like everyone else. The whole key is to get pit road before the caution comes out. But as the leaders come down through the left-hander of turn six and turn seven, they peel off the pit. They have to watch the the pit entry light. We talked about this time and time again. This pit entry light is what you have to go by, and both the 78 and the 4 didn't make it, which is surprising, Jeff, that they caught it. Yeah, a really good job by those guys to be able to come on pit road with everything that's going on. Remember, it's under green still. They're moving quick. See the light on the right. They both saw it and did not pit. They understood the situation at the end. They were looking for the light. Nice decision. And the light comes on when the caution is thrown. So the yellow flag is thrown. The light comes on to close pit road initially until everyone gets piled up behind the the uh, pace car so that the field can get behind the pace car. And then once they're all in line behind the pace car, then they'll open pit road. Yeah, and that decision, Kevin Harvick is sitting 10th. If he pits with closed pit road, it's tail end of the longest line. Kevin Harvick would be 38th. So that is a plus 28 from a good decision. And again, just to remind everybody, as soon as spotters around the racetrack see debris, they see something on the racetrack that they think a caution is going to come out, they're screaming at the drivers. They're yelling at the drivers to pit, pit, pit. So these drivers know they want to get on pit road, but they also know why. They know there's something on the racetrack, so they paid attention to the light, did a good job. The five car's been having some trouble. What do you have, Kelly? Well, he just came back down pit road for the second time. That's Casey Kane in the five car. We saw a loose wheel on that last round of pit stops that traveled some distance. It sounds like at some point it made contact with the right front of Casey's car. There was some pretty good body damage to that right front tire, so, or right front uh, panel. So they've made, uh, took the time to clear it out, make sure there was no more tire rub. You'll see the bear bond on it there, but they had to spend a lot of time back down here on pit road and lose all those positions. Yeah, that right front quarter panel looks nasty on the five. As we get ready for the restart, the five actually hit the seven's wheel on pit road, and it went way down the racetrack. Cole Witt and Brad Keselowski make up row number one. Cole Witt, the race leader, takes the green flag and heads right down into turn one. Kozlowski able to get by as they come out of one and into turn two of the S's. Most of these top ten, they took advantage of getting on pit road. Cole Witt didn't pit at all. He's going to have to come to pit road soon. But he, he just stayed on the racetrack right there. The driver that is on pit road is 24 of Jeff Gordon. Once again, it seems like issues for that team. What's going on there, Marty? Well, Rick, once again, as you mentioned, issues for Jeff Gordon. They take the green flag with Jeff Gordon sitting on pit road, and the hood is up once again on Denny Hamlin's car riding around the racetrack. For Gordon, they have a brake line leak. He has now gone down a lap. He'll go down multiple laps as they find a new line to repair the 24 car second year in a row. They've got a fast car, Watkins Glen, but had issues with mechanical things. This is the second time we've seen the hood fly off of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. This time, though, it looks as though the hood pins have been knocked out. It wasn't just that the pins weren't put on. It looks as though he may have hit someone and knocked those pins out of the front of that car. And he's able to continue on because he can see through the flap in the hood where the, where the flap opens in case the car spins and keeps it on the ground. That's directly in front of him. So that's blown up, and he's actually looking through that hole. That's how he's able to keep speed. Crazy situation for Denny Hamlin. Kelly. And we're hearing now from the 11 team of Denny Hamlin that he hit the 38 car on that restart. That's what's caused that hood to fly up. I mean, we saw that back in Indy. That was due to those front clips not being properly affixed. This time it sounds like it was contact with the 38. So on the restarts, got into the back of the 38. He's able to see, but because of the possibility of something flying off of that car, they're going to black flag the 11. So his father will be told. Through there if we can run another. They want to run because they they're hoping to get a. Do they post this, Chris? How many laps we got? That's what they're talking about. The black flag gets posted for them. Anyway. 
And what he was asking is how many laps we have. That's have right. a couple laps. You can be black flag for one or two laps. And then NASCAR threatens to stop scoring your car. The 11, though, they have to come at some point. Now's as good as time as any. They're going to probably just cut this hood completely off. Cut the tethers and remove what's left of this hood. Kelly. And this comes after Denny had a uh, serve a pit road speeding penalty that sent him to the back of the longest line, which is why he was uh, back there to get that contact with the 38 to begin with. So we'll see what the crew does to go to work here on the 11. As Steve said, just going to try to tear away that hood. They've got the Clippers out there, and that's exactly what they've done. It looks like they've got the left side removed. And now the right side of the hood. And it was relatively quick work here to get that hood off of the 11. When we talk about mistakes, Rick, and I know that was an accident on the racetrack, but it was compounded from speeding on pit road, Jeff. You know, he said he ran into the back of the 38. Well, if he doesn't speed on pit road, surely he's not back there in that traffic. Perhaps he doesn't have that issue. They didn't cut everything off. They got the hood off, but that's a flap that would open up, and it's gone now. We'll see if it stays off the racetrack. Now, as silly as it sounds, the debris he just created may be what he needs because that that could get him the caution to get caught back up. So uh, they didn't intentionally do that. Well, now they've got the right side. It looks the like white it's side gone as around. well. The problem I have is, and we prepared for a lot of things during a race, but I, I'm not sure I have any preparation to fill the entire opening of the hood. And as fast as Watkins Glen is, yeah. and the caution's out, probably debris from the 11. Which, Jeff, to your point, they're going to have an opportunity to come in and work on. He didn't lose a lap. Let's make sure we talk about that. As big as Walken's going in, the 11 came to Pitt Road, efficiently removed what was left of the hood, saved his lap. And remember in Indy, in practice, they had the hood come up. They were able to put another hood on their car. So they, as silly as it sounds, they had practice at this. So can they put another hood on this car? They're all carbon fiber hoods, so they're all the same. As long as it didn't tear the hinges off of it, they may be able to put another hood on it and find a way to tether it on, on at the bottom, at the front of it, tape it down, and then aerodynamically they wouldn't be at a disadvantage. So again, the 11 of Denny Hamlin lost the hood. This is the 11 because of the speeding pedal. He's back further in the field. This is on the restart. You can see everybody gets bottled up. Some cars in the front didn't get moving as well as the others. And they eventually get bottled up. And you can see the 11 hit the back of the 38. That should probably sheared the hood pins, messed up the hood pin bar. Eventually the hood comes up. So the caution comes out. Brad Kozlowski is the race leader at the Glen. The 11 of Denny Hamlin missing a hood. He'll have to make his way back to pit road.
Get the ultimate pass to every moment of today's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race at Watkins Glen with Race Bunny. Choose from multiple HD feeds of different drivers. Follow the race action with a live leaderboard. Tune in at NASCAR.com forward slash Race Bunny. Brad Keselowski and the field going by the entrance to Pit Road. Carl Edwards, David Reagan, Austin Dillon, and Martin Truex Jr., the top five at the Glen. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Sprint. Check out the new all-in plan at Sprint.com slash all-in. Let's update how the Toyota drivers are doing today. Carl Edwards up in the top five running second. David Reagan also in the top five and third. And Kyle Busch top ten in eighth because of his running position. Kyle Busch is in the top 30 in points, which means that when the running order scrolls across the top of the screen, there will be a green chiclet underneath Kyle Busch's name is saying he is in the chase. So Denny Hamlin needed a new hood, and one of his crew members ran into the garage and got one. And so he has brought that to the stall. And Kelly, I'm guessing that they'll be putting that on here shortly. Well, they've sent Denny back around so he could uh, catch up with the pack and not lose his, his lap. And right now, they're still trying to come up with a plan for the hood. They've got the hood that came off of the 11 that was still relatively intact. And then you saw that other hood that, got, that was run over here by another crew member. They're just trying to figure out how they're going to fix one or two of these hoods when they can get them back around. So they've sent Denny back out on track while they come up with a plan to get one of these things reattached. And Steve, at one point there, Dave Rogers saying the problem is it's tethered. And that's the uh, issue they're coming up with to get these reaffixed. You can see a NASCAR official, that's David Green. He works with NASCAR now, former driver, uh, actually an former Xfinity champion. Yep. He oversees a lot of safety initiatives. So he's down there in the pits with them, making sure that they're doing everything they need to do in case that hood were to come off, that it's tethered, that it stays attached to the racetrack. So he's going to oversee this to make sure things get done correctly. 
Take another look at what happened. It was on the restart. Denny Hamlin just behind the 38. Driven by David Gilliland. Then he gets into the back of that 38. So it does damage to the front of his car. So Steve, the big question for me is if the hood pins are knocked out of and the hood pin bar is damaged, how are they going to attach the hood at the front of the at the front of the nose? Right. I think at the front of the car, their best bet is going to be just to tape it or put a piece of aluminum over it with a, multiple screws to try to hold it down. Dave, what's going on with the 88 car now? Rick, we've talked all weekend about how you can be annoyed by certain things going on while you're trying to do all this busy work around a road course. Dale Jr.'s got something going on in the cockpit. Blue pad is on the full board. I can't see it, but it's coming up, getting all tangled up in the seat. I got it. I had to dislocate my shoulder just about to get it, but yeah, so it was just that brake tape under your foot, right? Yeah. Glad it's gone. That far. Put your shoulder back in place. <laughs> How difficult is that, Jeff? I mean, it's hard to reach anything in there. It's worse to get your shoulder back in place. That's, uh, you know, that, those things are just annoying. You try to get it, get it out from underneath your feet. Uh, you know, it gets balled up underneath your feet. It's bothering your heels. It's just an annoyance. And what was the, what was that tape for, Jeff? To keep his feet from sliding on the floor. You want to get your heels where they don't slide on the floor. So I would imagine that's what the tape is for. I can't be 100 percent sure, but I believe that's what it would be. I'm thankful that he didn't put the tape over the camera. He put it above. The I, I think he showed the camera. <laughs> I think. Hey guys, are you looking? Because yeah. this is what it is. This is what I had. This is what I found. Brad Keselowski on the inside. Carl Edwards on the outside of row number one. It's David Reagan and Austin Dillon in row two. Martin Truex Jr. Sam Hornish Jr. in row three. AJ Allmendinger and Kyle Busch in row four. We're back to racing. Well, contact made there from Kyle Busch into the side of the 47 of AJ Allmendinger as they go into turn one. Coming up to the S's, still fighting for position. Here comes that 18 of Kyle Busch. He's following right in the tire tracks of the 47. Now going to the outside of Almondinger as they go into the bus stop. You just saw Kevin Harvick go by the nine of Sam Hornis Jr. Sam was very fortunate. He pitted right before that lap 26 yellow, gained some track position, working very hard to try to hold it. How many different strategies are we on already if we've completed 35 laps? Most of the field has been on pit road around lap 24 to lap 26. How about about two and a half? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we do. We have a group of cars that were fortunate enough to get on pit road before the caution came out. They pitted on lap 24. That is a little concerning. That's outside their window. But we've already had some yellows. They'll be in fuel conservation mode. Then we have a whole bunch that pitted on lap 26. You see across the top of your screen, right below their name, it says what time lap these guys pitted on. Amendinger, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, all lap 26. Sam Hornish is lap 24. Two laps doesn't seem like a whole lot. But let me just remind you, that's five miles of a track where you're doing a lot of shifting, burning a lot of fuel. And we mentioned earlier the pit window between 30 and 32 laps. This race, a 90 lap race. Kyle Busch is passing places that are not passing zones. The top S is not a passing zone, yet it was for the 18 of Kyle Busch. He got by the three of Austin Dillon. He's really coming through the field there, Mike. Yeah, he is, and the car, uh, believe it or not, is not completely perfect either. He says he's uh, having a little bit of a rear brake situation where it may be fading a little bit, and also he's got a bit of a wheel hop, so he's fighting through that, but still making his way toward the front, guys. Yeah, we heard earlier in the race, they talked about their strategy it wasn't to ride around and get points, it was to win races, and that's the way Kyle's driven so far this day. He's been very aggressive. Uh, Steve made a comment a minute ago about he's passing in very aggressive race places. So he is taking, he is going after the win. He's going aggressively. He's not worried about racing for points. The guy moving in the wrong direction is Austin Dillon in the three. Drivers continue to get by him. Now it's Tony Stewart that will go to the outside, and here comes Jamie McMurray looking to the inside of that three of Austin Dillon. And you see it right here, Jamie McMurray right up against the bumper of the three. You have to be very careful. Oh, and around goes the 51 of Justin Allgaier. He gets a point of the correct hey, direction. Guys, coming, guys, coming. Still coming, still coming, still coming. And we stay green. He was 19th when he spun coming through one. Yeah, but prior to that, he was running 12th. He was like in a 12th position before all those pit sequences start. So he's been having a good run. And I was worried about 
Austin Dillon because that's what happens. You know, it's easy to, when you people are trying to overtake you, it's very easy to get spun out. You see at the top of your screen, the 51, he just comes into the screen loose. Jimmy Johnson right behind him. I don't know if there was contact early. As much gap as there was between the cars, it looks like the 51 maybe just overdrove turn one and lost the back of the car. Marty. Marty. And Justin Allgaier had one thing to say. That 48 better hope I don't get back to him this race. He is not happy with Jimmy Johnson. Well, I guess that answers my question about the gap between the cars. It, Sounds like there must have been help from the 48 to the 51. Well, and as it as it happens in road courses, you will see the 48 pretty soon. And the way it always works out, restarts and everything else, without a doubt, you will get back to each other. It always happens. And listen, let's remember, Jimmy Johnson started near the front of this race, had missed the bus stop, had to come to a stop, fell all the way back to 22nd. Here we are, 35 laps later, Jimmy Johnson's only in 19th. It's hard to recover. Kyle Busch was able to get by A.J. Allmendinger. So Bush takes the fifth spot away from A.J. Allmendinger. And Kyle Bush has been aggressive. We heard A.J. Allmendinger at the beginning of the show mention that this is a racetrack where you can be more aggressive. You have a lot more speed. It's not as much finesse as, say, a Sonoma that they were at earlier this summer. Morning. We also heard A.J. Allmendinger talk about the pressure on his race team for this race, knowing this is their best shot to get into the chase. Under the last convert, under the last caution, here was his conversation with his crew chief, Brian Burns. Sorry, man. Just, I don't think it's going to happen today. Just don't have the speed. Uh, it's early, man. Stay here. We'll be all right. Did that give you a little more lateral rear support, or did it get spread out enough to tell? A little more lateral support, but it's plowing tight now, so... And you can just hear the dejection in A.J. Allmendinger's voice. And, Steve, I've got to wonder, as a crew chief, this is what we talked about at the beginning of the race. Brian Burns sat him down this morning. He said, stay with me mentally all race. You can hear the pressure and hear the sense of the fact that he knows they need to win this weekend. What would you say as a crew chief to get your driver back in the game? Well, that's very disappointing. I thought A.J. Allmendinger learned his lesson a little bit. After qualifying on Saturday, he told us after he sat on the pole that he didn't do a good job on Friday, that perhaps he was putting too much pressure on himself, overdriving the race car, had too high expectations. He relaxed on Saturday and ended up on the pole. But here we are again on Sunday. It seems like he's repeating the same mistake. Too much pressure on himself. I think Brian Burns is doing a great job of just telling him, listen, stick with me, bud. We're 35 laps into this race. There's still 51 to go. And he's got to remember, he's in sixth. It's not like he's outside the top 10, outside the top 15. He's running six right now at the Glen.
Brad Kozlowski in front of the field at Watkins Glen. It's happened before, but he's never finished there. Three times Brad Kozlowski has been the runner up here at Watkins Glen. He wants to change that statistic today. While we're away, the 42 and the three had an issue. Take a look at the 42 coming in. Maybe a little hot. Got into the back of the three. Around they went. That's a good example of getting into turn one. He just carrying too much speed. He saw it got really loose getting into the corner, and the three had, was doing nothing wrong. Complete victim. They were running 40, 42 of Larson was 14th. The three of Austin Dillon was 12. Let's take a look at who's on the move. Brought to you by Budweiser. Sam Horn is junior. 16 spots he's made up. He's running in the top 10 and 8th. David Reagan is made of 15 spots. He's in the top 5, running 4th. Michael McDowell, very good on the road course, has made up 14 spots. He's in 17. Mike David Reagan running up in the top 5 now. And, you know, backing up the confidence that I sense in his voice this morning when I spoke with him, and he was very relaxed. He, in fact, he had already won once this weekend, believe it or not. He won a dirt modified race at Black Rock Speedway nearby, but it wasn't really that that gave him the confidence. He knows he has a great race car, and he's got a very good strategist in the crew chief of Brian Patty. Now, remember, Brian Patty got his first career win as a crew chief back in 2010, right here at Watkins Glen with Juan Pablo Montoya behind the wheel. It was a, an amazing strategy he put together that day, but it's not just that. Patty has also devised strategies to win in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series here at Watkins Glen. Victories he got with Ron Fellow, so Patty's certainly trying to noodle on this one and trying to figure out a way to get the victory lane today, too, Dave. Mike, Sam Hornish Jr. has been racing at Watkins Glen since he was 16 years old. That's a span of about 20 years, and he told me this morning that though he's never had a win here in IndyCar, Xfinity, or Cup, he loves coming here. Well, Crucci Bono Mannion got him a great track position move when they pitted under green under lap 24 before the caution came out. And I just checked with Bono, and he said, we can make it on one more stop. We will make that window. So two-stop strategy for the nine team of Sam Hornis Jr. As we see Logano in the 22 working his way by the nine. Yeah, I think it's a two-stop strategy for most of the leaders right now, but um, I think Sam Hornis and David Reagan both are, are perfect examples of guys that you wouldn't think are going to drive to the front at the road courses, yet when they strategy works that way and they get near the front, they're doing a great job of holding their position, especially David Reagan. You see her just at the top of your screen following Kyle Busch back there in the fifth position. Carl Edwards in the 19 running second. Take a look at this vantage point. We're on the front bumper of Carl Edwards. Yeah, what a great view. You can see he's going to pop over that curve. All but getting the grass right here. Uh, what a fun view. We're driving. We've got a left-hander. You hear him downshift right there. Left side on the curb. It's amazing how hard they accelerate. Right turn. Right against the wall coming to the start-finish line. That's an intimidating corner. You get your left side right against that wall. It feels like that wall is like a foot from your head. It is very intimidating. They just showed the crossed flags, meaning we are at the halfway point of this race. 45 laps to go. Oh, and this three with an issue with the left rear. The tire carcass just comes off and the caution comes out. And no one was on pit road. There was some contact with the 42 earlier. They thought it was just a tire rub. Obviously, it got worse. Pitch this time here. Pitch this time. The 43 of Eric Almarola will end up being the free pass recipient. We heard Slugger Labby tell uh, that's the crew chief for Austin Dillon. Pit this time. Don't worry about getting caught up. We have an issue. We need to get in. Take whatever penalty it is for coming when the pits are closed and start repairing this three. Marty. And Rick, remember they had contact with the 41 when Kyle Larson actually went around a moment ago. And Austin Dillon thought he had a tire rub that entire run. In fact, reported several times, I have absolutely no grip out here. Clearly there was now a tire rub on the left rear. Maybe should have come to pit road a little bit earlier. Quite a bit of damage to the rear end of that three of Austin Dillon as he makes his way onto pit road to the attention of his crew. Got to be a quick left side tires. Make sure radio you pick up the back bumper. We're going to have to be quick. 
trying to stay in the lead lap. The leaders are coming there. The leaders are almost on the front straightaway, so all they're trying to do is get a left rear tire run to keep from getting lapped. Change left side tires, so they won't have to do that the next time they come onto pit road. Just fix the tire, fix, get four tires here. Fix the roof lap, fix everything. See the leaders went by them, so they are going to be and a lap They have now. decided that it would be better to complete all the work on pit road as the lead lap cars are passing over to their left. A packed house at Watkins Glen. They love road course racing. This one, the second of the season for the Sprint Cup Series. They've been here all weekend. You've got campers in the infield and just outside of this road course in the back, Seneca Lake. What a great atmosphere here, too. We saw the track president earlier today and quite a few fans really enjoying this racetrack and the atmosphere that they bring. So now right here, it's decisions, decisions. This isn't in a window. Who thinks tires are important? There you go. Joey Logano, Jamie McMurray, Jimmy Johnson. That's farther up in the pack than I thought. That's only going to leave eight or 10 cars out on old tires. The 22 came from ninth. I'm shocked by that, really. Dave Burns. Jamie McMurray came from the 13th position. They will take four tires and fill him full of fuel. The car has been just a little bit loose for Jamie, so they're trying to correct that, Kelly. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 saying that his drive off was the biggest issue. Started out a little bit too tight. They're going to give him four fresh Goodyear tires, Marty. Kelly, this is a strategy A.J. Allmendinger used last year, taking tires now, likely on the final stop. These teams will take fuel only for A.J. Allmendinger. Car was much tighter on this run. A wedge adjustment to loosen it up and four fresh Goodyear tires. All those cars who pitted right now leaving pit road, Rick. You know what? Marty's absolutely right. It's going to be very interesting to decide. As far out as they are, though, with 43 to go, Rick, it's going to be interesting to see if they think they need tires at least one more time. And you mentioned the top eight stayed on the track.
Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Gorgeous day for these picturesque shots from high atop the Watkins Glen International. So Brian Kozlowski, Carl Edwards, Martin Truggs Jr., Kyle Busch, David Reagan, A.J. Allmendinger, Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Sam Hornish Jr., all staying on the racetrack. I want to take a look at our Xfinity speed charts. Kurt Busch reaching over 180 miles an hour on this track today. Kevin Harvick, Austin Dillon, both over 179 miles an hour. Incredible speeds. We heard drivers mentioning this isn't so much a finesse track as it is a speed track. You carry a lot of speed up through the S's and then that long straightaway before you get into the bus stop. Yeah, no question. Just the straights are so long here, and that leads into braking zones. We've heard a lot of drivers having issues with brakes, uh, wheel hopping, getting hot, and that's part of the reason. That the straights are so long, and all the straights lead into, you know, really high friction, high braking areas that create a lot of heat. So that makes it very difficult for the brake system to withstand it. We're going to get ready to see some heavy braking here because we have a split strategy. We have, you know, Clint Boyd, Joe Logano, Jimmy Johnson back in 14th, 15th, and 16th on brand new tires. It's going to be interesting to see how hard they push here to try to make up some spots. We have 42 laps to go. Let's see how we got to this point as we look back on a race recap. The 16 of Greg Biffle early on to the bus stop into the grass. And cut a left front tire, just couldn't get it turned. Had to go through the grass. You see Jeff Gordon. It was all the way down four laps down, actually shown in 43rd spot, had brake issues early in the race. Denny Hamlin on a restart, gets into the back of David Gilliland as we NBC it. Yeah, you see it doesn't seem like a lot of contact, but it obviously damaged the hood pin of the hood pin bar. The hood flies up, a lot of damage on the 11. They've since worked to put a new hood on the car. Aggressive racing, especially going into one. Jimmy thought he had the spot, and Justin didn't think he had the spot, and they ended up getting together, and Justin went around. And then, just a little while ago, Kyle Larson hard into turn one, trying to check it, check it up, but he got into the three. That cuts the three's left rear after the damage to that left rear of the three, and so some debris on the racetrack for Austin. 47 of A.J. Allmendinger, running six, Marty. Rick coming to green. Here's what AJ had to say under this last caution about how the handling of the 47 car is right now. I'm just watching my mirror. I'm just hanging on, man. They're they're eating me alive. Now the, the speed's not there. You can see it, but I, I don't know what else to do because the, the grip's not there in general in the rear. So why would Brian Burns not pit there like they did last year? The strategy that won the race, well, Brian Burns told AJ on the radio, we want fresher tires later, so we're going to stay out right now, and we'll pit around lap 58 or so. Rick? Thank you, Marty. Once again, the field behind the two of Brad Kozlowski. Carl Edwards on his outside in row number one. NASCAR reminded Brad Kozlowski, we need a clean start out of you. And as he gets a clean start, they bottle up behind him. The one of Jamie McMurray. Caution, 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 caution. See a lot of damage to both the front and the rear of that one of McMurray. And the five was also involved. Heavy damage on Casey Kane in the five. He can't have this after his trouble last week at Pocono. The five needed a good run. Jamie McMurray, though, another guy on the chase bubble. Two chase contenders trouble on this restart. And as you mentioned a week ago, the five of Casey Kane a terrible finish at Pocono. Really couldn't afford another bad finish if he wants to get in on points. This is almost forcing his hand with just four races to go before the chase that he will have to get a win. You see a lot more damage to that 32 driven by Boris said. See the nine car on the restart. He just doesn't get going. I don't know if he missed missed shifts right there. Missed a shift. 20 had to slow up. Everybody just had to check up. The guys behind him couldn't see and ran into the back of each other. Watch right here, watch the one car. 22, the one hits, the 27 hits the one, and they all just pile into each other. The 48 does a great job, uh, excuse me, that was I think the 40 of Landon Cass does a great job avoiding the five with the hood crumpled up. 
Yeah, you see right here, Landon Castle on the left side of your screen does a great job of not adding to the mess, being another car in the line. And this is what we see at Watkins Glen and Sonoma for that matter. Restarts are so difficult. Somebody makes a mistake, everybody's in one spot, everybody's going straight versus into a corner, a uh, quick corner, people run into each other. Then when you do get to the corner, you're side by side. Restarts have always been an issue at Watkins Glen and Sonoma. And I would say that the restarts also have to be an issue at Pocono because they were for Sam Hornis Jr. a week ago at Pocono. On the left, you see Sam Hornis Jr. had an issue with the restarts and then a mechanical problem got him into a very bad situation going into turn number one. Now, once again, a restart issue for the nine of Sam Hornis Jr. That bottles the cars up behind him. Quite a bit of damage to quite a few race cars. Unfortunate issues once again for the 47 and AJ Allmendinger. Here's what they said on the radio. Is there a lot of oil there in front of y'all? Looks like. Yeah, there's quite a bit over here. We're going to need to stay as far left as he can. So you see him shutting the car off, saving fuel. He restarts it right there by letting the clutch out. Yeah, it's about two and a half degrees up from the pump pit wall side. Good for him. He's going to reach up, shut the car off again. Once again, when you talk about saving fuel, a number one time to do this is under caution. So here he's coasting, has the left the clutch put it, pushed yeah, into his left foot. Yeah, that's to his left, to his left. We're giving him just some information about what's going on. Copy that. Let's have the clutch. Nothing happens. He's looking around, trying to figure it out. He's got the clutch out, rolling the rear tires, trying to get it to fire, and nothing's happening. No ignition. Checking the ignition switch, making sure everything's on. He's checked, everything's on, still no fire. How about the kill switch on the steering wheel? Do they still have the kill switch on the steering wheel? No, but what he probably... Keep as far 
left as you can just before the start finish line all the way into one stay wide off of one a lot of stuff working a lot of oil here in the middle of the track that car just died and they used to have the kill switch because of if the throttle hung, you could always hit so that switch. With the electronic fuel ejection, though, there's an ECU. There's a lot of electronic things that go in to fire these. You have to recycle the ECU. There's a lot of possible issues is the problem, Marty. And now they sit here silently on pit road, Steve. They're going to change tires here, but they cannot get this 47 to crank up. He has tried everything. He tried bump starting it. He tried, you know, once again, pushing the clutch in, trying to kick start it with the gear. There it fires, and now he's going to leave pit road here with uh, a full load of fuel and fresh tires, but obviously frustration. Remember at Sonoma, they had a car there, sat on the pole there. Obviously, it was very fast. They had a problem with a fuel filter that day. They got some debris in it. So now they have another issue. And A.J. Allmendinger, who's always good at these road courses, said on the radio, can we for once come to a road course and not have an issue? They certainly had their share this year. Yeah, they're surely going to be up plugging into that thing, plugging in the electronic uh, control unit the ECU after the race to see what kind of warnings and what kind of issues they have there. Mike Massaro. And Casey Kane has just uh, come from the care center and uh, it seemed to me like uh, you were caught up in an accordion effect. What could you tell? Well, it's just uh, like I'm trying to time it, you know, start finish. I had to run uh, from behind from the time we all took off and I'm trying to time it for start finish and pull out as soon as you get there and, you know, get a row getting into one but uh, they all stopped so by the time before we were start finish so before I could even turn right I was underneath them it obviously puts you in a, in a tight position here as we get closer and closer to the cutoff the second straight week uh, you're out of the race early uh, your thoughts in regards to the chase closing in on you right now I made it longer this week than last <laughs> you did. that was pretty awful last week but um, yeah I mean at this rate, we're going to need to win. That's going to be the only way we go into the, you know, into the chase. And I don't know. We just haven't. Uh, I don't know what my deal is, but we got to get a little better. I need to get a little better. We had a nice test at Bristol, so hopefully that'll help us when we get there. And uh, Michigan, there was times at Indianapolis that we were really quick with that package. I know they're working hard to bring a little less drag, more downforce type deal to there for us, for all the all four of us. So hopefully we can, you know, run good at Michigan. Maybe get a win there. We won there before, won at Bristol before, so maybe one of those tracks or, uh, I don't know, there's Darlington and Richmond. Some, there's still some tracks that we could run really well at. You can hear a little bit of optimism in Casey's voice. After all, he did squeak in with a, a late regular season victory last year. Yeah, Casey Kane on the restart. Take a look. He's back there a ways in that chaos area that we've discussed. Getting a run, and everyone checked up in front of him, and the front of his car looks more like an accordion now. You heard Casey, you can hear the dejection in his voice. There he is in 17th. He's a long way back from 16th. This is as they run right now. So we're showing Kyle Busch in because of where he's running. But, you know, Casey Kane down in 17th. He knows he's going to have to try to find a way to win a race. Very dejected. He was very dejected last week after the wreck, and he sounds very dejected again this week. Yeah, Pocono, he was 50 points ahead of the bubble. And today, you see him below the cut line.
NASCAR fans, don't miss a race. Visit NASCAR.com forward slash calendar. Download the official 2015 season schedule. Get pre-race reminders and find out all your local broadcast information. We're under a red flag condition at Watkins Glen. Most laps led today. Presented by Sprint, Brad Kozlowski has led 24 laps. Follow at Miss Sprint Cup on Twitter now for a chance to win an autographed hat from today's victory lane. Brad Kozlowski, Carl Edwards, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, David Reagan, the top five. Red flag condition as they continue to clean the fluid off the front stretch. Forty-three cars come to life here at Watkins Glen. Fired up and you're ready. This is like a super speedway of road courses. Drivers will have to pace themselves. More of a marathon than a sprint. Oh, we've had an issue. Eric Almirola, like Paul Menard in the 27. Cars are flying at the Glen. Every race means so much. You just can't afford mistakes. They're going to black flag the 11. We are in the Finger Lakes region of central New York. That is beautiful. Seneca Lake, 618 feet deep at some parts of that lake. We're about four miles away from it under a red flag condition. And because of that, we have the opportunity to talk to a driver or two. Let's see if Brad Kozlowski will chat with us. Hey, Brad, it's Jeff in the NBCSN booth. You got a moment to talk to us? Yes, sir. So you guys did a good job of using strategy when the caution came out to be on pit road and to get the lead. But when you got the lead, it looks like your car is really good. Yeah, we've been pretty good here last few years. And uh, felt like, you know, we got the lead here. We got a little clean air, and the car is certainly uh, a little bit stronger. I felt like we were pretty decent before that, too, Jeff. You know, we've gone from 11th to 7th kind of on our own, and we're running similar lap times to the leader. So, yeah, probably call it a, a little bit of break on that first yellow, and hopefully we can – Use the right strategy and catch it right on these yellows. So with a win in the bag already, you know you're in the chase. How aggressive do you get on this strategy? That's a good question for Paul. I'm glad I don't have to make it. 
<laughs> All right. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you, bud. Marty. Let's chat with Brian Burns and find out exactly what was the diagnosis on the car that shut off with no power. Uh, just under caution there, he was riding around, saving gas, shutting it off, and then just wouldn't turn back on. So uh, got him shoved down here down pit road, changed the batteries out. We got power back now, so we're kind of still diagnosing it. But looks like everything's OK right now, so we'll just have to uh, change our strategy up and see how we get it back up there. Could it be an alternator issue and something you're further concerned about? Uh, yes, we'll be having him watching the voltage here and just making sure it doesn't drift back down again. If it is that, then we'll be ready for it. AJ Allmendinger now one lap down, but maybe not out of it yet, Mike. And Jamie McMurray still sitting in his car inside the garage as the team assesses the damage and is coming up with a, a repair plan here under this red flag condition. Uh, there's some cosmetic damage, some body damage on the front end. They've got the bear bond out, but the big concern is the oil cooler. The oil cooler will have to be replaced. That's what Matt McCall told me moments ago. So that will be the extensive repair that they're trying to, to lay out a plan for right now uh, to try to get Jamie back out on this racetrack and, and miss as few laps as possible, guys. Thanks, Mike. I tell you, the Chase Bubble guys have really been struggling today. You see Jamie McMurray, he's in the garage right now, currently 41st in this race, 12th in the point standings. Jeff Gordon, 14th in the point standings, 43rd. Casey Kane, 17th in the point standings, he's 42nd. A lot of guys having issues here at the Glen today. Yeah, no question. We talk about the advantages this racetrack can give for, say, Eric Amarola have a chance to win. Here we see Eric Amarola having trouble. Came in here hoping to have a chance, have a good finish to move himself up into the chase grid, but had trouble early. Yep. Paul Menard also was involved in that. Then you've got the 24 of Jeff Gordon with brake issues. Yeah, they had to take time on pit road, lost four laps, fixing brake issues. You see Greg Biffle had a flat left front tire, caused him to go through the grass, through the bus stop, definitely got behind. And then the latest issue here on the restart. Jamie McMurray and Casey Kane both involved. And that issue with Sam Hornish Jr. not able to, it looks like, missed a shift. Yeah, didn't get up through the gears, and that made an accordion effect behind him. So a lot of damage to the one, as well as the five. Casey Kane already out of his car. Jamie McMurray stays in the car, optimistic. They could get him back out on track. We're still in a red flag condition. It's just turned to yellow now.
Welcome back to the Cheez-It 355 at the Glen. Today's aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. A few taking advantage of this caution and if you want pit road, Dave. Including Martin Truex Jr. He'll take four tires. Crew starting with the right side once again. They found that was faster. So they're going to go for four Sunoco fuel and send it back out, presumably for the last time, Mike. And David Reagan coming in for service as well. Team going around to the left side first. The call is for left sides only, it would appear. Quite a few on pit road, topping off with fuel. 48 of Jimmy Johnson involved, also Kelly. Yeah, and initially they were going to bring that 40 and they have a little bit of damage on the nose they were going to fix and Chad had initially called uh, for four tires and they had just previously made a stop for four tires. Uh, they went fuel only. Uh, so fuel only on the 48, but you saw maybe it took them just a little bit longer to get it topped off than they would have liked. And with 37 to go, I can assure everyone watching, no one who hit it now can make it 37 green flag laps. All of these cautions are coming down with the simple strategy that we're going to get yellows. We're going to get a certain amount of yellows. If they can go 32 or 31 laps, that makes their six short. They're going to need 10 or 12 laps of yellow. But David Reagan in the 55, that would be a great gamble in my opinion, Mike. It would indeed. You know what? Uh, just to clarify, though, they actually did four tires on that stop, Steve. They actually did their pit stop a little bit different than most. They started on the right side and worked their way around to the left. And uh, all four tires were changed on the 55, so not just a, a huge gamble there. You know, when we come to Watkins Glen, we talk about strategy. There's a lot of different ways to win this race. You can stop twice. You can stop three times. What lap are you going to pit on? We've seen different winners. You see A.J. Allmendinger last year stopped three times. Last stop at lap 58. Kyle Busch, he stopped twice. Last stop at 59. And how about Marcus Ambrose with the three stop? The big difference, though, is Allmendinger and Marcus Ambrose on those three stop strategies, they had dominant cars. Right. When I look at Kyle Busch, he had a good car. Or even Juan Pablo back in 2010, they had good cars. But today, I think it's going to be about track position and these guys that work their fuel strategy to get track position here at the end. It's not going to be about tires. Who has the best fuel manager? David Murray working his way back on. He's three laps down. They've got to get out and try to get as many points as they can. Uh, they've been in pretty good chase, pretty good uh, opportunity to make the chase based on where they are in points. But anything they can get, they need to go get. Joey Logano in the 22. They have this to say. So it's going to be a complete disaster when we go into one here in the tree start. For one, no one's going to be able to see. For two, it's going to be slick as it can be. You can do it. Two, no real option here. Speedy drive put down on the racetrack after fluid was put down, so they're trying to absorb that, but it will be a little dusty as they go into turn one and actually goes all the way through the bus stop. Brad Keselowski on the inside, Carl Edwards on the outside as they come back by the front stretch. Green flag back in the air. Thirty six laps to go at Watkins Glen. As they barrel into turn number one. Relatively clean through the S's. Kyle Busch able to get by Carl Edwards. He's in second behind the two of Brad Keselowski. Now putting pressure on Brad as they go into turn five. Yeah, I mean, what a great shot of how aggressive the 18 was able to get into the inner loop. Gained four or five car lengths on the two of Brad Keselowski, but now you see that Brad Keselowski is actually a little better through the carousel, gains a little ground back in front of the 18. Well, let's see if Kyle tries to outbreak him. He's been really aggressive on breaking. He gains a lot of room, doesn't try to make a move, but once again, Kyle Busch trying to make ground while breaking. Here we go. Kyle Busch to the inside. Can he make the pass stick? He's got the momentum and the position. No, Brad Keselowski back in front. It's not over yet, though. Kyle's going to make a little look, get into turn one. All better of it. Stays behind him as they go through one. Brad way out above the curb. 
And he loses the spot to the 18 of Kyle Busch. Now they're side by side again through the S's. He hasn't lost the spot yet. He's going to have to give. You cannot. I shouldn't say cannot. I don't think you can go through those <laughs> left S too wide. I have yet to see it be successful. Let's see if Carl Evers can take advantage of those guys losing momentum. See if he can make a move right here to get back to second. Coming up to the bus stop. Once again, reminiscent of 2013, the battle between the two and the 18. That race, there was fluid on the track. The 18 got sideways with a little help from the two. The two wasn't able to hang on, though, for the win. Marcus Ambrose got the win that year. Now, Brad Kozlowski in front of the field at the Glen. Here comes the 18 again. Gets into the back of the two. Moves him up the racetrack through six. Couple laps away from Pitt. Coming into seven. The 18 on the outside. He will take the lead as they come in front of the grandstands. The fans on their feet cheering as they see the 18 of Kyle Busch go by. Seen it all day long. Kyle Busch is all, he's an aggressive driver always, but today he's taking it up another notch. He's going after him. He is under braking. It's amazing how hard he's driving that car. What strategy does he have to play, though, to be able to keep this track position, Steve? He came onto pit road on lap 26. Well, at this point, it's really how comfortable the crew chief is with 34 to go. They'll probably run one or two, maybe three more laps, and we'll see him on pit road. That will give up the track position to a few guys that stopped under the caution, but right now that's their only opportunity. But we see we have troubles. The 14 is slow heading into the interloop. And if he's not able to keep going, that could bring a caution out. That this would be, be a caution. A, this will be a great time if they'd want to duck onto pit road. If it's still green when they hit the front stretch, all the leaders will absolutely be on pit road. So Tony Stewart in the drive line. and the caution comes out. He said something in the drive line of the 48 is sideways as well. And who loves this caution? Everyone who pitted under the last caution. Remember, they're short on fuel. They have to make it on fuel. Kelly, what happened with the 48? Well, he's been having a tire rub. Remember I told you they had thought about repairing some damage to the nose earlier and opted not to. They went fuel only and they had been waiting. They were going to bring Jimmy in to fix that damage because he was reporting a tire rub just before he went around this last time. And the free pass is going to A.J. Allmendinger. So A.J. Allmendinger will be back on the lead lap. Mike. And Rick, total disappointment in the 18 camp. As soon as the car spun and it looked like there may be a chance to get down pit road under green, the team sprang to life. They were ready to pit. And then the caution came out, and Adam Stevens came over the radio and expressed his disappointment. He does not have a lot of optimism now. He feels like everybody's going to come to pit road, and they're going to be at tailback. Well, they're absolutely right. They're going to come, and while he's currently the leader, and that seems like a good place to be, when he comes to pit road, Mike, when he goes to restart, he's going to have to absolutely restart behind Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., and others. David Reagan, others that decided to pit under that last caution. So he's going to start probably well outside the top five, but that's their only choice. They have got to hit pit road now. There's no more waiting. Marty. Rick, a chaotic few minutes. It all started with Tony Stewart stopping on the racetrack. There you see the truck coming to push him. Here's what he said on the radio. It's not like it broke a axle. It, at least it would pull if it was just one axle, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sounds like it's a rear gear. Yeah, I could. It did something weird when we came down through the carousel the lap before, and then off of one it felt flat, and then I could really hear it. Then when I got to the top of the S, it broke. And Chad Johnson said, we'll meet you in the garage. Disappointing end of the day for Tony Stewart, who started third. And it looks like, Rick, all the leaders will hit pit road in just a moment. Well, at least the top three, Kyle Busch, Brad Kozlowski, Carl Edwards, they all came to pit road on lap 26 or 24. Cole Witts, who's running fifth, he came to pit road on lap 33. Joey Logano was on pit road on lap 47. Newman, Boyer, Casey Mears, all came to pit road on lap 47. Fourteen of Tony Stewart, the drivetrain issue. So he is getting pushed back to pit road and the garage. And remember, those cars that pitted a little while ago, they need cautions. They have to have a certain amount of cautions if they're going to make the end of this race without running out of fuel. So this not only helps them with the track position, 
but it's also buying them time. It's buying them the cautions that they have to have to make this work. So A.J. Allmendinger in a situation where he gets the free pass, so he'll be back on the lead lap. But are you hesitant about saving fuel and shutting your car off because already today you have had an issue with some type of an electrical problem as we're seeing race leaders on pit road. Kyle Busch all the way through the top 10 and beyond Mike. And Rick Kyle Busch will be forced to give up the lead come down pit road. This is going to cost him a lot of real estate on this racetrack. The call for four tires and get as much Sunoco race fuel in that car as they possibly can. Adam Stevens trying to come up with a new strategy now. Meanwhile, teammate Carl Edwards also looking for a four tire change in fuel. He was last in on lap 24. Bottom of your screen, Brad Keselowski is here, and they are going to take four tires. He told Paul Wolf, that's all I've got right there. Two free in the right-handers and the left-handers. He was just okay. A lot of teams taking fuel only, including Keselowski's teammate, Joey Logano. As you pointed out, Rick, they stopped on lap 47, so that was the advantage. They did fuel only on this stop. Under 32 laps to go from here, most will be able to make it. We'll see what strategy plays out here at the Glen. Stay with us. NASCAR racing continues next weekend live on NBCSN next Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. It's Sprint Cup Series racing from Michigan. And Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, Xfinity Series, the Nationwide Children's Hospital 200 at Mid-Ohio. Take a look at the lead changes today presented by Sprint. Six lead changes. Most recent, Matt Kenza has taken over the top spot. Join all in wireless from Sprint. Get unlimited talk, text, and high speed data. And pick your smartphone for just $80 a month. So, strategy coming into play once again. A week ago, Matt Kenseth wins a fuel mileage race. Well, the 18 was out front with Kyle Busch, and he and Adam Stevens are talking a little strategy now on the radio. All right, so as far as fuel mileage goes, then you got to throw out what you just. That last segment, right? We got to go off the first run. We, we can make it to the end here. I'm not worried about that. 
Save what you can. Save what you can for green white checkers. And uh, it'll be go time, but there's a lot of laps left. Uh, we still got to get a good finish, man. Best finish we can. We'll see what happens. And when he says that, we're looking big picture again. Earlier in this race, when we had Kyle Busch out in front, he was in the top 30 in points. Well, he's not in the top 30 in points now once again, so he drops back off of the chase grid. Yeah, I mean, basically, Adam Stevens, the reason he's selling, going to have to sell the big picture now because he knows this race hasn't fallen his way. Right here is the example. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick, they came at the lap 51 caution as soon as it happened. Martin Truex Jr., who I think is in the driving seat, they came at lap 53. All of those guys have had six laps of caution to save gas. Joey Logano in 14th came at lap 58 but took fuel only. Kyle Busch, unfortunately, while he does have the best tires and the best fuel, starting 21st at Walkers Glen with 31 to go, I think it's too much of an uphill battle. I think your winner's going to come out of the, one of the top three or four cars, assuming they can stretch that fuel. Not only is it uphill battle, he heard Adam Stevens talking about it, get the best finish you can. They're racing for points. If they can't get the win, they need those points. So we've seen how aggressive that he's been. Can you be that aggressive when you're back in 21st? That's a great question. He's going to have to pace himself a little bit, not get himself in a wreck. And we continue to call the area that Kyle Busch is in the chaotic area, where a lot of chaos takes place. Guys have overcharged through turn one. We've had issues with the restarts. Those guys could get in trouble back there, right where Kyle Busch is running. What I've seen everywhere in Watkins Glen has been the chaotic area here yesterday and again today. Well, the five of Casey Kane is making his way back out on the track. He will be quite a few laps down, nine to be exact. Field two by two once again. Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick in row one. Green flag back in the air. Quite a bit better restart this time. Three wide once again as they go into turn one. And they bottle up through one. Kyle Busch trying to make some moves on the inside. Side by side for the lead. Here comes Harvick on the outside. Harvick takes the lead away from Kenza. Up through the S's they go. Kevin Harvick in the garage earlier. Everyone talking about how strong the four team was. They just showed their strength coming up through the S's and they take the lead away. and the 11 coming into your shot. Two cars that had trouble earlier in the race. The spit strategies helped them get back. They worked themselves all the way back to fifth and sixth. Down into turn six. It's Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Martin Truex Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Larson. The top five, the differing strategies. The top two with Harvick and Kenseth. They were on pit road on lap 51. Lap 53 was Martin Truex Jr., Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kyle Larson. A little more fuel, a little less time to save it. We talk about fuel, but with 29 to go, these guys are still racing. They, they have to worry about fuel, but they're going to have to do that at different laps after they get a lead or, or under yellow. Right now, they're racing for the win. They're racing for this race lead. They can't worry about fuel under green. So Greg Biffle in that 16 car, he's another car. We saw him through the grass early in the race. He's worked himself back up to seventh. So it's really interesting as these cars find themselves in the front, they're able to run in the front. Even though they had trouble, they were able to overcome it and, and hopefully get good finishes. Here comes the 88, looking to the outside of the 78. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to get by Martin Truex Jr., not able to make the pass through six. Into seven they go. The 88 once again trying to look to the inside of that 78. Here comes the 42 of Kyle Larson. He gets to the inside of the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he'll race him down into turn number one. That's the example, Jeff, how you talk about turn seven is not the greatest of passing zones. When Dale Hart Jr. made that move, he lost his momentum and gave an opportunity for the 42 to get by. Currently on the lead lap, 36 cars. Alex Kennedy running 36 now, the last car on the lead lap. What that means for quite a few drivers that are on the bubble, 
Guys like Casey Kane, Jeff Gordon, Jamie McMurray, all drivers that are outside the top 40 right now, trying to get into the chase with just five laps or five races remaining, including this one. Now, these guys are all racing hard, but they're also all in the same strategy. If they're a little bit smart, they can work with each other a little bit, not push each other too much. We saw last week, the top three guys, they ran themselves out of fuel. They all pushed, pushed very hard, made each of them run quicker than they really needed to based on fuel. These guys need to work together to try to save a little bit of fuel. It only takes one guy, though, without patience to mess that entire plan up. So many things have changed as far as plans getting messed up. You see Gordon and Paul Menard, Ryan Newman, all right there in the top 16 in points as they continue to battle for position here going into one. David Reagan getting by the 16. Greg Biffle. How about David Reagan? He's done a great job today. We certainly don't think of him as a traditional road racer, but once he got track position, he's done a really good job of staying there. Yeah, he's done a great job, and I keep looking right at the back of this line right here. You see coming in the screen, the 55, the 16, but how about Joey Logano? Look at the inside of the nine right here, Sam Hornish. Remember, Joey Logano took fuel only. He has better fuel than the cars ahead of him, so you talk about patience, Jeff. Well, Joey Logano and Kyle Busch, one spot behind him, they're not going to have any patience. Their goal is to run as hard as possible and push these guys into running out of fuel. Exactly. Make them run hard. Make them run harder than they want to. Uh, you've got the speed, you've got the fuel, use it to your advantage, not only trying to pass people, but making those guys run hard. Again, third and fourth have, third, fourth and fifth have two laps more fuel than the guys out front. Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth both came onto pit road on lap 51. The three behind them came on pit road at lap 53. And we talked to Brad Keselowski earlier, he was leading the race, he felt good about where he was, his car was out front, perfectly clean air, now he's mired back, he's in 18th. Look at what he's dealing with. You know, this is driving into the inner loop. He's on the outside of Danica. They get into the inner loop, contact. Gathers it back up. Danica, I'm not sure if she went around. It looked like she was going to go, go around. But that's a difference. That's a difference between having clean air and being back in the pack. It is two completely different races. These guys right here, it's much easier. These guys, although it's not easy, it's easier than the guys running 20th. People don't appreciate how much harder it is to run in the middle of the pack versus running in the front of the pack. Chris, you're, you're, you're Matt Kenseth getting a hit yeah, in the rear bumper. That's not easy. Mark Trucks Jr. was in the back bumper of the 20 of Matt Kenseth. Very tight racing here. From first all the way back to Joey Logano in 10th. Well, then you better look right behind Joey Logano because while Logano is at the back of this pack and Kyle Busch is not, Kyle Busch is running half a second to one second faster than the leaders catching this lead pack. When he gets the bumper of the 22, he's going to be included. But remember, catching him is one thing, Rick. Passing is something different. Here was Kyle Busch on the radio and their team. Oh, we're never going to drive all the way up there, man. Let's just save a little bit here. We don't need the fuel. Save your car. Save your tires. When we get a caution, we'll have something to raise them. It's a long way up. Trying to be smart. They've made it all the way back up to 11. And by doing that, where they're running, they're back in the chase, back in the top 30 in points. And why does Adam Stevens say that? Because he's watched the 22 of Joey Logano. He's got short. They definitely need a caution. So they, car is stroking it. That's why he's so slow. You hear him. He knows the leaders are short. They need a caution. And he watched Joey Logano catch the leaders. But even Joey Logano hasn't been able to pass any of them. Yet. He's now got by the nine of Sam Hornish. But he's very slowly moving up. And with 25 to go, Adams is, Adam Stevens is doing a great job. He's playing the hand in front of him. Let's just save our stuff. Our best chance is wait for a caution get caught up. All right, let's go through the field. Brought to you by Carl's Jr. We'll start with Dave Burns. Fastest cars of the weekend. Kevin Harvick continues to lead. The driver was told two things before this restart. One, you need to save, uh, you are going to be two laps short on fuel. And two, be as aggressive as you can on the restart because that clean air will be important. Mike? A week ago, Matt Kenseth checked a track off his winning list, if you will, when getting his first victory at Pocono, trying to do the same thing here at Watkins Glen. In fact, he's never recorded a top five finish at any road course. Earlier this morning, though, his crew chief Jason Ratcliffe told me this is the best car they've had here in three years, and they feel like they've got an opportunity to win, Dave. 
Mike, the 78 of uh, Martin Truex Jr. running in third right now. He put it two laps later than Harvick did. He put it on lap 53. They have not talked about him being short. Remember, he ran out of fuel last week, so they went to school on their uh, calculations this week, Mike. Kyle Larson reflected back on his first Sprint Cup start here at Watkins Glen a year ago. He said he never entered a race more mad at himself than he was last year at this time because he hadn't figured the track out. But as the race unfolded, he learned quite a bit. Some of that stuff carried over into this weekend. He's just picked up where he left off and feels very comfortable behind the race car and still thinks he's got a real good shot at recording a top five today, Dave. Greg Ives told me this morning that Dale Earnhardt Jr. needs to be able to be aggressive at the end of the race. Now, he's one of these cars that also uh, uh, put it on lap 53, so he'll have a little bit of fuel till the end, and he put his driver in a good position to finish where he is, Mike. David Reagan having a great ride right now. I spoke with him this morning. He told me, look, there's probably about 15 cars that could finish fifth today. I'm one of them. I want to be that guy that finishes in the top five today. He feels like he's got a very good race car, just needs a little bit more lateral grip, otherwise he'd be good. What a day it's been for Danny Hamlin. Remember, he had that hood fly up after contact early in the race, spent a lot of time on pit road as they replaced it with a spare hood. He last pitted on lap 51. The team saying he's about a lap and a half short, but right now, well inside that top 10, Marty. Kelly, when I talked to Todd Gordon this morning, he said, you know, the goals really have changed for Joey Logano at the road courses. He said in his first part of his career at Team Penske, we really were shooting for top five, top tens, and we were very happy if we got a top ten. Now we're shooting for top fives, trying to make a move on Denny Hamlin there to get the seventh position, top fives and wins. Marching his way up front right now, they restarted 14th. Joey Logano just took seventh, Dave. Biffle was third fastest in final practice, but crew chief Matt Pusha told me he just didn't hit the bus stop right in qualifying. As you see Kyle Busch going to the outside, and Martin Truex Jr. has trouble coming to pit road right now. You saw that big dive in there. Looks like damage to the left front of Truex. You see it there on the ground, perhaps a tire down. I didn't see if anybody had contact with him. So one of the top three guys now on pit road. Martin Truex Jr. hit the wall coming out of turn number seven. You see all the damage to the right front of that car. So after running up in the top ten. Yeah, we saw earlier, though, he had damage on the last restart. I think that damage was there earlier, and perhaps it just finally wore through and cut the tire. Let's see him coming out of seven. He may not have hit the wall. Look how high he gets up. He's definitely going to hit the wall. I don't think so. I think oh, my goodness. He held on to it. Yeah, that's what I saw. I saw the 55 in front of him. He was able to stay off the wall. Yeah, you see the left front tire is flat. I think you, we talked earlier about a little bit of damage on the left front of the 78. It finally made contact with the tire long enough that it's given him a flat. I saw that 55 of David Reagan get right up next to the wall, and then the 78 came out from behind it. So the 78 of Martin Trex Jr. back on the track now, still on the lead lap. But he scored 36. Although it, hurt, it certainly hurt his opportunity to win this race. If that tire goes down on the other end of the racetrack, he's got to go right. all the way around. If you're going to have a tire go down, that's where you want to have it go down. He's able to get right on pit road. Great opportunity for the 78 team and Martin Truex Jr. to fix that car and get him right back out on the track. How about everybody behind him, missing him? I mean, he was yeah. you know, he was stopped all but stopped in the middle of the racetrack, turning right, getting on the pit road. Everybody did a really good job. I saw Greg Biffle had to make a big move. They all did a really nice job getting on pit road. Listen, I want to talk about the 18 a little bit. We got on him a little bit last week about not saving enough fuel and he ran out of gas. But I think right now they should be pushing hard. I think this is an opportunity. They've caught the lead pack. They have the best situation on fuel. They have the best tires. Push these guys hard. Run hard. I disagree. I think you can get to the front from right here. You're running in a spot. You have new tires. You have more fuel than almost everybody. I say push them. Go make them run out of fuel. Go pass them and get yourself your track position. Restart comes out. It's a big difference between restarting in eighth and restarting in fourth. So I think you should be going hard right here. Well, one thing's for sure, after the caution, I was concerned that he was going to have trouble, but he went from 21st to like 11 in four or five laps, Marty, so he's got to be feeling better about his chances. Well, see, the team that feels good about it is the car a few in front of them, Joey Logano. I just talked to Todd Gordon. He said, we're right there at the checkered flag with our fuel. They stopped at 58, and so they think the guys in front of them have no chance of making it to the checkered flag unless they get a caution. So they're good to the checkered flag on the 22 if they got a green-white checkered. And then they might be in trouble, but they are the furthest forward of the guys who are fairly certain they can make it all the way. And 
it sounds as though Matt Kenseth is trying to continue to save fuel. They won it on fuel strategy a week ago. Here's what they had to say on the radio. Yeah, that's all well and good until that yellow and red car, that 22 gets right there. Well, guess what? Now you're going to have to run hard because if you want to win this race, you get the 22, you get the 18 in front of you, you're not going to have as good of a chance to win the race. So they need to push. They need to not let Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick, Luke Larson, they need to not let them save fuel. I'm a stats guy. I love stats. With 20 to go, I'm still feeling good if I'm Rodney Childers or the 20 of Kevin Harvick because every race for the last 14 races here, we've had a caution after lap 70. We just crossed lap 70. This race is not going green to the finish. I might be wrong, but at these crew chiefs, I like the gamble they've made. I feel we're going to get cautious. Now, can they outrun the 22 to the 18 with the cars they have? I don't know. The 18's done a great job. He's pushing the issue like he should, but I like their gamble on the caution. And let's continue through the field. We'll pick back up with Dave Burns. Bonamania was tempted to pit Sam Hornish under caution when a lot of other cars came down, but he stayed with his plan and pitted his driver on lap 56 under green. He told him when they got going this time, we need one more lap of caution, but only for a green-white checkered. If this goes a scheduled distance, Sam Hornish is good to go. Kurt Busch has been working on and off of pit road. They did a lot of work on that car throughout the afternoon. In fact, it was very quick throughout the weekend. Crew chief, uh, his crew chief told me this morning that he was very happy with the way it was working, but they had a lot of brake problems on Friday. After working through those, they found the handle for Kurt Busch. Mike? Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer already has a road course victory on his resume. It came at Sonoma back in 2012. Spoke with his crew chief, Billy Scott, this morning to give me a little understanding why he thinks he's so good at these types of racetracks. He said, well, it's kind of surprising. You wouldn't expect a dirt track driver from Kansas to be good at these types of racetracks, but he just manages his tires so well and can handle the body sway much better than some other drivers, and that's been very effective for him. Right now, he feels like it's a very good race car, especially in the turns right now. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards feeling good about his race car as well. Darian Grubb, I spoke with him this morning about the run that JGR is on right now and asked him, well, when are you going to take part in this party? He said, well, we already did. We feel like we kicked it off with our victory in Charlotte way back in May. Feels like they've been running very well and they could be on the precipice of a victory themselves. Marty? Mike, Brad Kozlowski back in the 14th position and right there he goes past and there goes Greg Biffle actually slowing through the bus stop. He did come to a stop there and able to continue after that for Brad Kozlowski. It's a typical run for these guys. They've had a ton of speed, but once again, they may not get the finish that they would like to have. They've told him several times, don't worry about anything behind you. Just focus out front trying to get through the field. He restarted 22nd. He's made his way up to the 13th position and still Brad Kozlowski has led the most laps in this race. Kelly. Well, Brian Newman came into this race 14th in the chase standings. Remember last year he got in on points alone. Not traditionally a great road racer. Has only had one top 10 finish in the last 14 races on road courses. But his crew chief, Luke Lambert, told me their biggest strength is just going about their races and do, focusing only on themselves and the things that they can handle. They're now running inside that top 15, a lap and a half to the good on fuel, Dave. His teammate Paul Menard put it on lap 58, so they should be okay. Remember, he finished ninth yesterday in uh, the Xfinity Series race after getting punted out of the top five. I talked to his crew chief, uh, Justin Alexander, this morning about the, bet, the value of running yesterday. The cockpit is very, very similar. The rhythm, very, very similar. And that helps a driver on a weekend like this to get his rhythm at Watkins Glen, Marty. David has been an up and down day for AJ Allmendinger. Remember they had the car that led laps early on, led 21 laps, but then they had the issue where they had a battery problem. The car would not fire back up. He had to come to pit road. They had to switch out batteries. He restarted, listen to this, 36 on this restart. He is up to 17th, took fresh tires at lap 58, making his way through the field. It probably won't be the win they wanted, but he's trying to get a top 10 out of the day, Kelly. Jimmy Johnson is winless here at Watkins Glen, just one of four tracks where he does not have a win, and it has not been a clean day for the 48 either. We saw him have contact earlier in the race. We saw him have a spin out. He's now worked his way back inside the top 20, but his crew chief, Ron Malik, told, told me at these last few races before the chase, they really want to focus on getting good finishes to build team morale, Dave. Casey Mears is running well, and they really improved that race car after their first pit stop. The forward grip was much better, the team told me. And this is the same car they ran at Sonoma. 
with a new rear end housing. You might remember that at the end of that race, a wheel and an axle ended up outside of the 13 car. They have that corrected. Kelly. Eric Almirola in that 43 car, another team that's on that chase bubble, and he's been so hopeful that they could point their way in. They had issues early in this race when they made contact, which cost them a lot of positions as they had to fix the 43. Eric's put in a lot of work to improve on his road racing skills using a simulator, trying to salvage what they can. They're running 20th right now, Marty. See Justin Allgaier right behind him, still has that damage from where he and the 48 made contact earlier in the race when Justin ran in the top 12 for much of the early part of this race. Now has fallen back, but on this restart, since this restart, however, restarted 31st. He's up to 21st with four fresh tires trying to make his way back up to the field and salvage a good day out of it. And just behind Justin Allgaier is Danica Patrick running 22nd. Kevin Harvick has a six-tenth of a second lead. Over Matt Kenseth, Kyle Larson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Joey Logano. Those are the top five. When do you start thinking about fuel as we only have 15 laps to go? Well, I think Kevin Harvey started thinking about it when they dropped the green flag. He knew he was short. I think the 20 car, they started thinking about it. Larson, they all started thinking about it. So I think they've been trying to save fuel this entire time. I just don't know if you can save that much fuel. They were banking on cautions with only 15 to go. You're certainly getting nervous. but. Kevin Harvick's really good at saving fuel. Matt Kenseth did a great job last week, so I think they've been saving for this entire run. And the back of this line of cars is the green number 18 of Kyle Busch. He doesn't want them to be able to save fuel. This is what they had to say on the radio. have it I like the confidence yourself. I like the confidence that that those guys can't make it I think Harvick and Kenseth are definitely in the worst shape they pitted at lap 51 Kyle Larson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. pitted at lap 53 and 37 laps is still a long long stretch but they've had seven yellows or excuse me six yellows on that tank of fuel it's it, it's a long way I don't disagree with the crew chief of the 18 car but you know you don't know for sure what they have and with 14 to go Look, there's a lot of races left, 14 oh, yes. to go. We could have 10 laps of caution for all we know here. And we've talked a lot today about A.J. Allmendinger trying to win this race and making the chase. Well, guess what? Kyle Larson in third, he has he pitted on lap 53. Could he win this race and find his way into the chase? Could the two guys in front of him run out of fuel like Matt Kenseth saw happen a week ago at Pocono? I'm sure that is what Kyle Larson is banking on right now. Stay in position. Try to stay on the back bumper of that 20 of Matt Kenza. You are two laps better in fuel. But again, just behind Kyle Larson, Joey Logano came to pit road on lap 58, Marty. Lurking there in fourth and running some pretty quick lap times as well. So far on this run, Todd Gordon has said not one word to Joey Logano about fuel in front of him, fuel behind him, fuel they have. They haven't mentioned it all. So, Steve, I'm curious, how much communication would you have with your driver if you're sitting here thinking you can make it to the checkered? Pretty sure you can, thinking the guys in front of you can. Would you not say anything, or would you communicate a lot of that to him? Well, I think that basically Todd Gordon understands the race in front of him, and he feels that Joey Logano must feel it as well. If you look at the top of the screen, it has the top five cars when they were last on pit road and how many stops. Kyle Larson's had four stops. He's had an eventful day, but really what matters is the last stop. You see Joey Logano in fourth place. Last stop is lap 58, Marty, and I think Todd Gordon is not saying anything because he wants Joey Logano to go try to win the race. They must feel good about their fuel strategy, so there's no reason to tell him what's going on in front of him. He knows his driver's giving him all he can. And that makes me believe that these guys are running hard. If Joey Logano can't catch him, if he doesn't know he has a fuel issue, then he's probably running aggressively. If he can't get by the 42, it makes me wonder how hard the 42 is running, the 20, the 4, all these guys, they may not be saving fuel at this point. We saw the 18 charge all the way up to the position he's in now, which is fifth. And now he hasn't been able to close the gap between he and Joey Logano. Is that on purpose? Well, we he heard thinking that the guys might run out of fuel in front of him. Yeah, we heard his crew chief say, hey, look, let's let those guys run out of fuel. Uh, as long as the 22 is here pushing them, then maybe he doesn't need to push them. I believe they both needed to get there, though. I needed they I believe that when Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, 
Larson, when they looked in the mirror, they needed to see the 22 and the 18. They, they needed to know that they needed to make pace to try to run them out of fuel. Mike. And, you know, they're still trying to coach him up a little bit over the radio. Adam Stevens is telling that, uh, telling Kyle that, hey, look, by our calculations, it appears that uh, perhaps only the 22 might have enough fuel to go the distance. At least that's what they're telling Kyle, perhaps getting him a, a little bit more confidence that maybe this will work out in his favor. Well, look, last week we saw the 18 and the 22. Funny how it's the same players yep. involved. Run each other basically out of fuel at Pocono. Kyle Busch, I'm sure he's running hard, but let's remember, we all had him in the chase. We all keep saying he's in the chase. They're not in the chase. They have won races, but they have to end up in the top 30. So Kyle is right in front of him. He has it right out his window. Adam Stevens, is he has the real numbers. And I like where Adam's mindset is, that if we really don't think these guys can make it, you run out of gas up to S's, Jeff, you're going to have to stop on the racetrack. This race could perhaps go in overtime. Dave. Guys, Dale Earnhardt Jr. runs six. He was just told this on the radio. Okay, about what's going on with the gas? Okay, without the caution, we're still three and a half laps short. We got two and a half seconds to the seventh place car here. Even the most optimistic driver and the best saver is going to have a little trouble with three and a half laps. Yeah, that's that's eight miles. Well, if sure. if that was the first communication about fuel and needing to save that many laps, it's too late. I mean, you have to you have to have that communication when the run starts because you have to save fuel over the, the entire run. We don't know if that was the only communication, but if that was the only one, then it's too late, most likely. Right. Joey Logano got by Larson. And so guys, now that he's by Larson, how hard is he going to push here? I think he's pushing hard. I think he needs to push hard. He needs to make these guys. We've said it a hundred times. But he needs to make them push hard to run them out of fuel. But also, even if they don't run out of fuel, when we get those cautions. It's way easier to run, win from second than it is from third. And listen, when we talked a few miles last week, these guys tried to go a little over 90 miles at a racetrack where you only shift a few times a lap. I'm going to tell you, bigger and few miles at Watkins Glen with all the shifts in all these corners, you're not going to get the same few miles as you did at Pocono. These guys are really trying to stretch their tanks. And the 20 of Matt Kenseth had this to say. To say. Let me know, Jason, if you help me race them or let them go here. You could be way faster than what we're running. If we don't get a caution, you're going to have to save pretty heavily. He can make it. So I would say if he's putting pressure on you, just let him go because it's looking like it's going to go green. We need about one lap. We need one lap. you got 11 to go. So already the 20 team of Matt Kenseth knows that they can't make it on fuel. They've got to start saving. And we're not the only ones he's dropping. Don't think that the team of the 18 <laughs> and the team of the 22 aren't listening to those same radio tra transmissions. They know what they have in front of them. That's music to Joey Logano's ears. Let me go and see Kyle Busch make an aggressive move inside Kyle Larson. Those newer tires maybe are starting to pay off for the 18. We also heard them say you only have one lap to save, as opposed to when we heard the 88. They said they had three laps to save. That's a huge difference in number of laps that have to be saved. Dave. Harvick was told two at the beginning of the run, but just a lap ago, Rodney Childers told him 10 to go, uh, a couple laps ago, 10 to go, and you are going to run short of fuel if we don't get the caution. So that's the situation they're in. And when we talk about, let, let, let's go back and talk about, these guys are in the chase. Under their names, you're going to see that green box up there. Right. They have won races. Kevin Harvick is in the chase. They're here to win. The 20 of Matt Kenton, they won just last week. Joey Logano has a win. Kyle Busch is the guy, and Kyle Larson. Those two cars are still worried about points and or a win. Kyle Larson needs a win, probably for sure, to make the chase. Kyle Busch needs a good run. And right now, he's having a good run, staying in eyesight of, eyesight of that 22. With Joey Logano just in front of him, both on the same pit strategy as far as when they came to pit road. Lap 58 for them. Eight laps to go for race leader Kevin Harvick. And we talked a lot about the guys in the front of the pack, but look right here at Clint Boyer. Here's a guy that's back there in, the, in, in that 16th spot. He's got to find a way to get into the chase. He last pitted on 58. So what he's hoping for, he's hoping Harvick, Kenseth, Larson, he's Earnhardt Jr. He's hoping all those guys run out of fuel so he can maybe get a top two or three finish. So all this strategy not only affects who can win this race, but ultimately who can get in the chase. Big picture for quite a few of these drivers. And once again, Joey Logano going by Matt Kenseth. Now Joey Logano only has Kevin Harvick in front of him. Teammates nose to tail just behind Logano. 
So Joey Logano moves up to second and aggressively going after the four, Marty. And about three laps ago, the first word of fuel was mentioned on Joey Logano's radio. A spotter tab boy to those guys cannot make it. We can start pressuring them. And that's when he was able to get by the 20. So look for Joey Logano to pick up his game even a little bit more in these closing laps. I love this side of the racetrack because 19 laps ago, I thought Kevin Harvick was in the catbird seat. He had pitted at the right time. He just needed some cautions. Here you are with seven to go. Nowhere near enough cautions. Uh, can I jump ship? Because I think the 22 <laughs> and the 18 now are in the catbird seat. But that's how easy this happens. When you pick oh, a yeah. strategy, You all these crew chiefs understand the opportunity and the risk involved. And unfortunately, you can study all the stats you want, but if you don't get a caution, it's going to be hard to stretch that fuel. 47 is on pit road and falling quickly from the top 10 that he was running in. Marty. Well, Rick, this just puts a period on the day for A.J. Allmendinger. He said they were out of fuel. He said, how can we be this short? They thought it might be voltage, but he says it is fuel. They pitted at 58, took four tires and fuel, and there you see him going back on the racetrack on what's been an extremely disappointing day for that 47 team. It shows you how hard it is to win these races. They did a great job last year. They had a plan. They came here and won the race, got themselves in a chase, but it's just not as easy as having a plan. You've got to, everything's got to work right. So you got to have a can't have mechanical issues. Drivers got to do a good job. Teams got to do a good job. It's easy to say, hey, we're going to come and win this race. It's a whole other thing to actually do it. Kevin Harvick trying to focus on downshifting, upshifting, brakes, accelerating, getting through the turns, keeping his eye on the mirror. He's also communicating back with his team about fuel strategy. We were too short. That'd be close. Kevin It'll be needs close. that. <laughs> you know what needs that's that called? information because he needs to know how much, you know, how short were we? He's so good at saving fuel. He knows what he needs to do to try to get two laps. And so he's just confirming that. How many laps was it? Because he needs to know. He's trying to think, did I do a good enough job? Do I need to do more? There's a lot going on inside that race car. And that was wins talking back to him yeah, because it was. Shoulders. Ah, it's going to be close. Either way, <laughs> it's going to be a fun day. We had a shot at it. We're probably too short, but it's going to be close. And the 18, we think, will be strong enough as far as fuel goes to make it to the end. He still needs to get by the 20 of Matt Kenseth if he wants to challenge that 22 of Joey Logano. As we were just talking about the four last time by, the four picked up his pace, outran Joey Logano for the first lap in a while on lap time. Perhaps Kevin Harvick was just running hard enough. We got coming to five, five to, go to go to see how hard he had, or how much car he has left. Well, that, that's and that's that was my point. Did he just say, "Hey, how many short were we?" Just to review, how much fuel do I think I saved? Now it's a gamble. There's no fuel gauge in the right. car. There's no way to know. It's all experience. That's the only way he's judging this off of. He just got to trust himself and say, "Hey, I think I saved enough," and then go try to win the race. And of course, Joey Logano is trying to put as much pressure on him that he can, so that he couldn't save fuel and had to run as hard as he possibly could to come up to the bus stop. Kevin Harvick just in front of that 22 and now the 18 has been able to get by the 20 of Matt Kenseth. So Kyle Busch up to third. Mike. And whatever Adam Stevens said to him, it's certainly gotten Kyle Busch to believe because just over the radio moments ago, he let out a laugh like he was having so much fun behind the wheel of that race car. He believes that some of the cars, at least one, may not have as much fuel as his. Uh, Adam Stevens told him, hang on, it's not go time yet. I'll tell you when to go. We want to save enough fuel for a green-white checker. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a basketball coach when a player shoots a three-pointer, like from five feet deeper than the three-point line. He's doing, oh, no, and it goes in. He's like, good okay, shot. Good idea. Well, that's what that was. <laughs> hey, you're not going to catch him. You're not going to get to the front. Well, guess what? He's at the front now. So now he's like, okay, change the strategy and try to go win the race. I like your plan better than mine. That's what the crew chief's thinking right now. As long as we make it on fuel, Kyle, you had a good idea. They want to make sure they make it back around. They do not want to run out of fuel two weeks in a row when they're racing for points. They need to get into the top 30 if they want to be chase eligible. Kyle Busch, a great story this year after breaking his leg and foot in the Xfinity race at Daytona. Missed 11 races in the Cup Series until he was able to get back. And now after he's been back, he's already won four races and challenging once again here at Watkins Glen. I always laugh when I hear the comment, I don't like fuel mileage races. What in the world is not to like about this? There's so many strategies. To me, it is what racing's all about. It's more than just who can build the fastest car. Also, who's the smartest? 
who can do strategy to get yourself a win. I love fuel mileage races. Coming through seven, this time by, it'll be three laps of racing to go. This is about the window where they thought that Kevin Harvick might be running out. Three laps to go. Kevin Harvick in front of Joey Logano, and it's Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Kurt Busch. So if you are Matt Kenseth, if you're if you're back there and you can't get to him, then go really slow, right? His goal is to go as slow as he can without getting passed for fourth place. Everybody's strategy is different based on where they're running. Dave, how are they feeling now under three laps to go? Rick Harvick had one other opportunity to really save, and it was when he was told the drivers behind him were saving. And that gave the driver the opportunity to slow down even more. Now, that was long before Joey Logano caught him, but it was about midway through the run when he knew the drivers behind were trying to make it on fuel as well. And now, with under three laps to go, he has the 22 of Joey Logano. Just about five car lengths back from him. They go into turn six. Two more turns, and they will have just two laps to go at Watkins Glen. You see Kyle Busch nowhere in the picture. He made the determination they're far enough out, and I cannot get to him. So he has just stopped. I mean, he is saving fuel, saving fuel, saving fuel, hoping for a green white checker. And now, one thing unique for a road course we talk about what's different at a road course. Another difference is how you put fuel up in these fuel cells. Because you turn both directions, you have to have multiple pickups. So it's not just running out of gas. The four car going up to the S's could just stumble a little bit. Just a small starvation for fuel. Lose just enough power to let the 22 pass them, but still having enough to get to the line. That's the problem when you talk about fuel miles. It's not about just running out. As close as the 22 is, it has to run clean all the way to the checker. And the, and the great danger now also with two to go, does somebody, we heard it earlier, does somebody run out of fuel on the racetrack and cause a caution? So all these cars are worried about that as well, not just themselves, but can somebody else affect this race? The four of Kevin Harvick in front of Joey Logano, but the gap is gone now. Logano all over the back bumper of the four. And remember, once I see a white flag, the caution won't matter. The race will be official. Marty, what's the 22 saying? Tab Boy, the spotter, just told Joey Logano. The four spotter just told him we could run out at any, any moment. You got to wonder if that's some poker playing, but then Todd Gordon said, quote, flip the switch inside the car, meaning it's go time. Now you can go after that four car a little bit harder. Here they come onto the front stretch. The white flag in the air. Kevin Harvick, he needs two and a half miles of fuel to get all the way back around. And the 22 way out of the turn. As the 32 goes sliding out, that was Boris said in the 32 out in turn number one. That's going to save the pressure from the 22 to the four. Now the four only really needs to worry about his fuel. Just back it up. Yeah, Let's see. Fuel at the end of the back here. Got plenty of room behind you. Save some fuel. Rodney Childers, he's not done Mark. chiefing yet. Save a little gas. We have some gap out the back. Kevin Harvick through the bus stop. Now he's got five, six, and seven Mark, in front of him. Does he have enough fuel to get there? That will be the question. The elevation changed from five, six to seven. Very minimal. Out of turn five, headed to six. Does he have enough fuel to get home? He's offline. That tells me he's out he's of out. gas. He's, he's out. out of gas. He's coming out. to the left. Here comes the 22 of Joey Logano. Trying to stay in front. He just he gets through six. He runs out of fuel. Here comes the 22. Joey Logano racing him as they come out of seven. Joey Logano comes onto the front stretch. Logano's going to win at the Glen. Now, where does the four finish? He's got to cross across the line, looks like. The weekend here, buddy. Pull the weekend. Awesome job. Oh, yeah, guys. Woo! Look at the celebration for Joey Logano. Hit that blue bar, boys. Joey Logano kicked off the 2015 season with the biggest win of his career, winning the Daytona 500 in February. Now he will head back to victory lane, sweeping the weekend at Watkins Glen. Kyle Busch, a smart race for he and Adam Stevens. Kyle Busch coming home second. He is in the top 30 in points. That means he is currently in the chase.
Go back and think about Joey Logano getting into turn one on that last lap. He completely missed the corner, but he saved the car. He didn't wreck it. Had he spun out, he wouldn't have been in position to win that race. So although he overdrove the corner, he did a good enough job to catch the car, keep it on the racetrack, and move on. Gave him a shot to win the race. Teammate congratulating him, Kelly Stavis. Must have been some tense moments there at the end for crew chief Todd Gordon, who also crew chiefed Joey last night in the Xfinity win. He had never won on a road course. Did you ever imagine coming into Watkins Glen, you'd come away with a sweep? I thought we had a shot. I, uh, I didn't know about a sweep for a weekend. Uh, that car yesterday was awesome, but uh, well executed today. Uh, got ourselves in the right position. We had a fast race car, just didn't get a chance to show it. Led the lap that mattered. How confident were you that your strategy would be the winning one there at the end? Well, I, I felt like we, were, we, we got ourselves where we could be the first car on fuel to make it and uh, had to push those guys hard enough to make them use up their fuel and not save, not save fuel. So uh, put ourselves in the right spot, executed. It was a sweep of the weekend here at the Glen for Todd Gordon and Joey Logano. And enough fuel for a very impressive burnout here on the front stretch. Team up on the wall, Logano saluting them. last lap. Joey Logano going into turn number one has Borisette sliding just in front of him and way out of the line goes Joey Logano but as you mentioned saves it and then right back into the gas chasing down the four of Kevin Harvick right out of six Harvick's out of gas looks like he had a little bit there in seven got it going again but wasn't able to hang on. Yeah, you can see the four, it would shut off, but then it would pick enough fuel up and it would take off running again. So Kevin was still in the gas. He almost got in the back of the 22 when it, when it started running again. And I think Todd Gordon said it the best. Not only did they play the strategy to be the first guy on fuel, but Joey Logano drove a great race to push those guys to run out of gas. Yeah, let's, let's, just because Harvick ran out of fuel, think about what he did. He put her on lap 51. And he managed that fuel. He knew how many laps he had to save. He missed it by a straightaway. That's all he missed it by. So, you know, although he didn't get a win, think about how hard that is to do. He led the race, had enough speed, put himself in position, and saving fuel the entire time. He did a massive job even though he didn't win the race. Joey Logano gets Penske his first win at Watkins Glen. And he sweeps the weekend. Xfinity race yesterday and now a Sprint Cup winner at the Glen. He'll be in victory lane when we come back. with a flat right rear tire. Joey Logano making his way to victory lane here at Watkins Glen. Want to take a look at today's Coca-Cola winning moment as Joey Logano takes home the checkered flag. It was fuel mileage. The opportunity presented itself the four of Kevin Harvick. Bobbles runs out of fuel. And it was a last lap pass for Joey Logano.
Coca-Cola winning moment. And he had enough fuel to make it all the way back into victory lane. Marty. Joey Logano pulls into victory lane. He gives Penske their first win at Watkins Glen in the Cup Series. Now just two tracks where they haven't won at. Joey Logano, the road course king in Watkins Glen as he sweeps the weekend. Going to hand him the broom and sweep it up. An Xfinity Series win and now a Cup Series win on the road courses. Where did all this road course prowess come from all of a sudden? <laughs> it's taken a while, but uh, man, what a great show Penzo Ford. Just uh, patient and methodical all day long. And uh, I felt pretty sure the four was going to run out. And then it got to the last time, like, shoot, he's not run out. Now, so <laughs> this might not work out for us. But uh, he, uh, right at the end, there was able to get by him. Makes up for last week. We lost the race this way, and now we won one this way. So could be more proud of these guys. First time I ever stepped the weekend. We never thought it would happen at a road course. This is a uh, coolest weekend of my life. <laughs> Walk me through that last lap. You nearly lost it in turn one. And then your reaction when Harvick runs out of fuel. Yeah, I mean, the last lap, uh, I went in the one and just thought, man, I got to drive things as hard as I can. And we all hopped in there, lost a little bit. And uh, he ended up running out and got by him. But uh, yeah, he gave us a good shot there at the end uh, through turn 11 after he ran out of gas, just trying to, uh, I guess, it was the last day session for him. But uh, man, what a, what a cool race. And uh, I mean, it's, every driver wants to add a road course victory to their resume. And, uh, really, really neat to be able to add this one. There was not a lot of talk about fuel on your radio, so how hard were you pushing Kevin Harvick? Hard as I can go <laughs> the whole run. I was just trying to pick him off one at a time. I was really, really good through the bus stop, so I was trying to use that to my advantage uh, to pass cars, and we were able to kind of pick our way through it, but then, uh, um, you know, Harvick, was, once I got to him, he picked it up. Like, you can tell he was saving fuel, and once I got close to him, he started going faster and lost a little bit, but... Uh, that was just the, the coolest win uh, to, to win at this place. Is obviously, I think Shell and Ford, um, Coca Cola, uh, you know, everyone, AAA, Auto Trader, AutoZone, all those guys that help us out. This is a dream come true win here. He came into the weekend with zero road course wins to his resume. Now he has two. Joey Logano sweeps the weekend at Watkins Glen. And he referenced last week where he was on the opposite end of the fuel saving mode three laps to go joy logano in the 22 out in front and he's searching for fuel his teammate the 18 gets by him he has to come to pit road to get fuel so he can finish up the race and this weekend the difference is he doesn't have that question look on his face he has a big smile on his face because he is in victory lane let's go to dave burns Rick, Kevin Harvick led 29 laps today more than anybody else. When you were told you needed to save two laps, did you say to yourself, I can do that, and it was just as close? I thought I'd done a pretty good job of, of saving fuel uh, under the caution, and really I was just running as fast as I needed to to, to protect the lead there um, You know, as I was in front of the 20. And once the 22 got there, I had to pick up the pace just a little bit. But all in all, Budweiser, Jimmy John's team did a, did a great job today, and, and we were in position to, uh, to have a win two corners away. Um, but that's just kind of how the middle of this season has gone. We've had really fast cars, but the circumstances have just gotten the best of us. So hopefully we're saving that up for the last 10 weeks. I was going to say, what does that tell you then about your team heading toward the chase? It tells me I have the best team on pit road. I mean, our cars are faster than pretty much everybody else's every week. And uh, the circumstances have, have definitely bit us uh, quite a few times. But all in all, um, if you have the fastest car and you keep running in the top five and leading laps, eventually you're going to wear them down. It was an impressive day in a lot of ways. Let's go to Mike Massaro. An amazing drive back up through the field it was for Kyle Busch. Man, you drove that car very hard, came so close. What was it like behind the wheel? Uh, well, it was um, fun and challenging all at the same time, and I guess that's all we could ask for as race car drivers, you know. But, uh, man, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what my emotions are. I'm just happy for this team and happy with what these guys are doing, Adam Stevens and, um, and everyone at Joe Gibbs Racing. They've been building some really good race cars, and I uh, appreciate TRD, their engine, and everything. So. Um, good day, you know, solid day. I, I had a chance. I could have went up there. I could have raced to 22, and I could have passed him. I felt like I was I was better than he was, but um, my crew chief called in scared, you know, on the fuel situation from from last week. And I don't blame him. You know, we definitely didn't want to run out again. We we wanted to make sure we made it to the end. So uh, Logano swept the weekend here. You know, that was pretty cool to be able to do that at a road course. So um, you know, good for those guys. And adding to the weekend, you are, you are now among the top 30 in the standings. Yeah, we knew we would be. It was just a matter of time, and 
that was probably another reason, you know, we didn't need to run out of gas and have an issue here today. But uh, again, you know, this M&M's Crispy team, they do a phenomenal job. I can't say enough about Monster Energy, Toyota, and um, Skittles, everybody that's, uh, that's part of our program. Appreciate them. Kyle Bish comes home second. Let's take a look at the results. Logano, Kyle Busch, one and two. Kevin Harvick running out of gas, but able to finish third. Matt Kenseth on the same fuel strategy finishes fourth. Yeah, great run for Clint Boyer. And how about Sam Hornish there in ninth? Two good, two guys that were looking for good runs. And Dillard Jr. in 11th. Saw him at the front. Kyle Larson ended up 12th. Paul Menard, a good run. Ryan Newman with good runs. Those guys trying to make the chase. Justin Algar with a good run in 19th. Still looking at the point situation for those drivers trying to get in. Denny Hamlin finishes 27th after the hood incident that he had. A.J. Allmendinger was 24th starting on the pole today. Jamie Murray all the way down there in 40th. This guy trying to make the chase and then look at 40, 41st, 42nd, and 43rd. A lot of heavy hitters. Jeff Gordon, Casey Kane, and Tony Stewart. And with these results, we took a Take a look at the chase grid. Kyle Busch, because he's in the top 30 now, is number two on this grid with four wins already. That means now that we have whittled down to just four drivers that can get in on points. And I think the big question here is you see that the Clint Boyer is feeling good in 16 plus 50, but just remember, that's assuming no one else wins. If we go in the next handful of races and Jeff Gordon or Casey Kane or say Kyle Larson win a race, that line continues to move, so no one is still safe unless you have a win. Mike Massaro. A strong run for both the Bush brothers. Kyle bringing it home second, and brother Kurt fifth. Another strong run for you here at the Glen. How would you assess the day? It was a great effort. We had to overcome a pit road penalty, and just being stuck in the back, I wasn't quite making the right decisions on some of the restarts. I was trying to be cool and be smooth and work our way back up with a nice pace, knowing some of the front runners couldn't make it on fuel. But for us on the Haas Automation Chevy, I wanted to finish what we started at Sonoma. I wanted to win it today, but a top five is a great effort. Uh, thanks to Monster Energy, Chevy, Haas Automation, and all the Haas employees that are down there in turn one rooting us on. I felt it each lap through there. Another strong road course run for Kurt Busch. Victory lane once again for Joey Logano. And it came down to fuel mileage once again. We saw the strategy play out. Joey Logano took just fuel where the 18 of Kyle Busch came and got fuel and tires. That put him out behind Joey Logano. Logano gets the win. Kyle Busch comes home second. Yeah, Todd Gordon had a plan. It executed it very well. He said that in his interview, how well they executed. His plan worked out. Was the first guy with the best fuel window. No cautions to the end. Gave him the opportunity. Yeah, what's so interesting to me is that that's just the beginning of the strategy. When you get fuel, but then what do you do with the fuel? Right. How hard do you push the guys around you? So it may be easy to set a plan early in the race or before the race even starts, but to actually execute it, that changes depending on what the people around you are doing. So the celebration will continue. NASCAR racing coverage will continue next week live on NBCSN. Next Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, it's Sprint Cup Series racing from Michigan. And Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, Xfinity Series Nationwide Children's Hospital 200 at Mid-Ohio. Now, let's send it over to Chris Devota and Kyle Petty. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.